from Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, Orny Adams. Plus the news with Chris Loxamana and the irate eight of March Madness Madness. And now, the opposite of a Nepo baby. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. The choice we got a mandate. You get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend, right, Orny Adams? Love it. In studio, Chris Max Pat is in here. Hey I got guys. questions for uh, both of you. Um, so I was driving in and I was talking to Dr. Drew, and uh, he said, I haven't heard from you in like three days, which is a, a long time for me. I, yeah. I, I talk to Drew every day. Okay. And uh, I was, he's like, I was worried about you. Where were you? I said, I was in Florida. I did five shows. We left at three in the morning. I, I left at four. I got up at 4 a.m. On, on Friday, flew out of LAX at six. I was, I was just layovers and planes and shows and I, time differences. Like, I just, yeah. couldn't, I just couldn't get hold of you for like three days. It's a good excuse. Yeah. And uh, he said, uh, oh, I said, well, what'd you do? And I, I explained the harrowing leaving Naples at three in the morning and cannonball running it to mm-hmm. Tampa and catching a 630 <laughs> flight and returning rental cars and yeah. checking bags. Welcome and, to the road. Welcome to the road. And uh, he said, uh, yeah, that's that's got to be tough. Like he said, I, I don't think I could do that anymore. The two hour sleep right. night or the five shows yeah. with the no sleep the night before. And I said, yeah, my, I can, I can soldier through. But I said, the, what really makes it easier for me, the paycheck is the paycheck. Yeah. And yeah, the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're no. lining up for you still, right? I said, yeah. I said, uh, no, I said, you know what, what makes it easy is I do this shit with Mike August and Mike August is not a points collector. Mm. Now, Let's try to figure out who the points collectors are. Okay. See, this kind of shit is hard with people who collect points. People treat experiences in relationships like frequent flyer miles. Right. So some people, like when they're in a relationship, you know, and they're maybe the wife says, I want to see a rom com tonight. Mm hmm. Maybe the guy wants to see the rom-com. Right. But if he's a points collector, he'll go, yeah, oh, I want to see Ant-Man right. versus the Mosquito. But okay, <laughs> well, have it your way. Have it your way. Well, we saw a rom-com last time. Oh, we'll go. We'll go. Yeah. We'll go. Yeah. I'm not, I don't like it, but I'll go. Because I'm collecting points for the next time mm-hmm. this comes up, I will cash those points <laughs> in. Or... You would like Thai food tonight. Maybe I would like Thai food, but I go, no, no, I, I'd like Italian, but let's have it your way. Right. Uh, but remember, we're doing it your this way. This is smart uh, relationship manipulation. <laughs> These this are is... points collectors. Right. And I fucking hate points collectors. So you don't do this. I think everyone has, there's a righteous version of it. Oh, let's hear that. Uh, the righteous version <laughs> is I set up for the Christmas party on Friday night. I shouldn't be the one who comes and cleans up on Saturday alone. Right. But that's righteous. Uh-huh. You know, I'm that there, there's a math to that. Mm-hmm. But the, there are point collectors out there. And there's some who just never engage in it. That Mike August does not engage in the collection of points. Mm. So when you travel with him... And he'll go, uh, well, I got to fill up the rental car before we return it. So instead of meeting you guys at 5 a.m., I'm going to grab it at 4.30 in the morning, fill it up, and then I'll meet you guys back at the hotel. You go, thanks and good. But he doesn't collect them as points. Huh. Yeah. You see it's, what I'm saying? It's almost confusing he, because I, I, when I deal with August, like there, there are times when he gets upset with me, really upset with me. And then next day, clean slate. Almost to the point where I'm like, did you forget what happened? But he just He's not a care. collector of points. He huh. also, you know, when you say to him, look, cancel the flight out of Naples that's taken us to Nantucket. Let's just cannonball run it at 2.30 in the morning through to Tampa. He doesn't go like... Oh man, we're gonna have to leave at like three no. o'clock, man. That's that's tough. And uh, yeah. he doesn't yawn. <laughs> oh. Yawners are point well, oh, collectors. I, you know I what I mean? <laughs> like he, you ever seen Mike August yawn? I've never seen him. Seen either. him in a lobby at five a.m. two hundred times. Yes. Seen him in a lobby 
that we travel through. Is this the tour manager? Yeah. Four, okay. Four hours earlier, we'll be traveling through the same lobby on the way to our rooms right. and back. If he's standing there, no cup of coffee, mm. no yawning. Never yawns and never does the, oh, God damn. Oh, my fucking, oh, I slept for two hours. I can't even believe. Right. I didn't know where I was when the alarm went off. I was dreaming. I didn't, I was hallucinating. He just goes, oh, see there? Does it because mm. he fucking played football his whole fucking life. <laughs> yeah. This is what I'm trying to explain to people. This is not a coincidence. He played fucking organized football his entire so fucking he's got that, life. That brain and his scan dad thing. was a coach. Yes. And he's a fucking team player. Mm. And he's not a pussy. And he's not a point collector. So this is easy for me then to travel with this person yeah. who's not a yeah. puss and not a point collector. <laughs> right. Point collectors, it's like it's everything's a, a bargaining, a mm -hmm. negotiation, a discussion, and then you feel bad, like, oh, I feel bad. He's got to drop the rental car off, but he's going to drop me off in front of the airport. Well, then he goes and drops the rental car off, and it's— But that's his job. Yeah, but but there are a lot of people who have a lot of jobs who do a lot of point collecting yes. along the way. Yes. Mary a sigh from my guy. Doesn't yawn, doesn't I sigh, doesn't way, lament. Let, let me start here, because I have a lot of questions. The first yeah. is, I didn't know you were doing so well that you have a tour manager. So congratulations. <laughs> well, do we call him a tour manager? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, mean, I think so. It's an added expense on the tour. That's that's yeah. This yeah, is remarkable. Well, I just I if I did it alone, I'd be just miserable. I, yeah, right. and also I think he's kind of like your wrangler, point of contact. If anybody yeah. Needs and to how much agree time to. do you spend complaining to him? That's all I do. That's all you do, right? Well, no, we have we have discussions about how we both played a ton of football and we're not pussies. So right. we, we do have that. <laughs> we do have yeah. that in common. Have you ever worked with comics that yawn in the green room? No. I'll throw them out. Oh, I That's don't my like only that. rule. That when I go in the green room, here. I want all the lights all the way up. Mm -hmm. We're not going to sleep here. We're here to work. Right. I don't want to see a drink in your hand before the first show mm -hmm. Saturday night. Oh. We're here to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I see you yawn, you're out. And oh, don't shit. bring your friends back. This isn't a social hour. Right. <laughs> I'm going over notes. You're fucking yeah. pro. Don't post me right now. So this is so I've got to do that. This is why I need Mike August, yes. the former football player, non puss. Because mm -hmm. he would make sure there's no he would break necks, right? Somebody yawned. No, he he bets on college basketball. He's staring at his computer the whole time. Uh, you yeah. could do what you wanted mm. in there. You know. Interesting. He has his vices. Yeah. I, I I almost died in a plane crash. What happened? I was, you know, the FAA uh, and NTSB, they're investigating these six close calls. Yes, uh, sure. I was on this. one of them. Really? I was on one of them. You can Google it. It'll come Fox Business News, it's, uh, the flight into Sarasota in uh, February, mm -hmm. and we're coming in for a landing. And you know when you can see the runway and you're about to touch the runway? Mm -hmm. Like you're going three, two, one? Mm -hmm. We shot up like a <laughs> rocket. Wow. Like, and I'm going, I don't even know if a plane can go up this fast. It almost, right, going against the wind, and it just kept going. Almost stalled, you want to Yeah, say. that's why I thought we were going to go into a, a death spiral. Mm -hmm. It just kept going. Doing that top right. gun move. And mm -hmm. then they don't even come on. There's no pilot announcement. Right. So I'm saying, what, what, what's going, what happened? Did I thought they missed the runway. Then we just kept going for like five minutes. I thought they went to the wrong airport. Mm -hmm. And every, everyone's got speculation and theories. And I started recording, of mm -hmm. course, because I thought <laughs> if we're going down, yeah, I want to memorialize my final moments. <laughs> yeah. Like, dying to go to a comedy club in Sarasota. That's not how you want to go. No. Right? So uh, anyway, it turns out we were 150 feet from the ground. And there was another plane on the runway right yeah. there. And these pilots saved our lives. I heard about this story. Yeah. Was it Southwest or like a UPS or something? I can't remember what the plane on the ground was. No, this was an Air, Air Canada flight. Oh, Air Canada. Yeah, there it is. I've heard about multiple stories of this. So no, that's, that's me, though. I that was on was, that. That was you. We almost lost me. Would you have been it, the most famous person to die? Without a doubt. And I can tell you why. <laughs> because I'm the only one on Twitter that people have been contacting Mm. saying you were on our flight. I didn't even know I'd been recognized and nobody else is tagged on it. So mm -hmm. without a doubt, I would have been the most famous. And you never think you're going down in first class, but it can happen. Uh, yeah. It can happen. doesn't matter what class you're in. Well, let me ask you this. As long as you're uh, seamlessly flowing into air travel, mm. <clears throat> let me tell you what happened to me flying from uh, Houston to Naples on Friday. I've never experienced this before. Okay. But you tell me if you have. Okay. 
and then where it ranks in the hierarchy of bad flying neighbors. Okay. All okay. right. So we all, there's the put the bare feet up on the wall, you know, mm-hmm. next to your window through the crack yeah. in the seat. That's, that's bad. There is, you know, stuffing their luggage above your seat and then yeah. walking to the back of that's the plane. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. There is coming from coach into the first class Bathroom. commode and shitting that up and then making it back to coach. You know, there's a lot of activity. Uh, there's, there's using your chair to lift themselves up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> right, Almost right. catapulting you. Yes. <laughs> this is... This is a this is a close cousin to that, Orny. Okay, uh, I, but I've never experienced b- before. We were getting ready eh, about halfway through the flight, Houston to Naples. Friday had the tray folded down. Now, what people don't really tell you is they sort of figured this out in airplanes, but they've kind of figured them out in SUVs and automobiles as well, which is. You could get more knee room through making the SUV longer or the plane bigger, Mm -hmm. or you could make the seats thinner and create a little more knee room that way. Mm -hmm. And the thinner seats are good, you know, conceptually good. The problem is they flex a lot more than they used to flex. Mm -hmm. They're just made of lighter, thinner material. This guy got up. I had the tray folded down. Yeah. Uh, in front of me. Oh, no. Is this the sit down? I had my drink on the tray. Oh, I know this. This guy on the aisle. We're both on the aisle. Yeah. This guy got up to get something out of the overhead and did a full plop. Yeah. Just did not engage plop. any quad muscles at all. Just let himself <laughs> Didn't. full ragdoll it. Yeah. Boom. Hit the seat. Flop back. Snap forward. My drink shot up in the air and landed right on my <laughs> oh, come nuts. Come on. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Flew like, like Monty Python, it, you know, Marx Brothers. Yeah. Just, Popped it. Ugh. You have to picture if you take the seat and snap it back four inches and then it pops forward, that drink mm-hmm. is essentially going to be like when you see those guys at the lake and they got the big inflatable thing and yeah. one guy jumps off the high dive and <laughs> bounces it and just shoots the other guy yeah. into the lake. That's what happened to my drink. It just snapped. It popped in the air, popped back, <laughs> and did a full fucking gainer right onto my nutsack. Wow. Boom. Just right right and, onto the ball. Just do you say anything to the guy? Is there any like what the f-? you know, do you No, I didn't say anything to him. Mm-hmm. I just mopped up my crotch yeah. and and stared at it. Yeah. Is this an, a big person and what we would call obese? Not necessarily. Just sort of regular dude. He just went full flop into the chair. Well, th- it's it's a horrible experience, but it just goes down with everything that we're experiencing nowadays is everybody is completely unaware yes. and could care less about anybody around them. That is correct. Right. And there's no accountability. That guy right. is doing it. He did it on the return flight or I'm wherever sure. he's going to now. You know. Yes. Yeah. But how do you not think that sort of momentum, unless he did it on purpose? Someone has to do it to him for it, him to oh, maybe He may not have liked you. Was there any- Possibility. <laughs> did he recognize you? Do you think? I have no idea. Maybe you did something. Maybe yeah, you Kevin Smith fan. Maybe you. Yeah, it could be. No, I'm. I'm very careful not to grab the person's seat in front of me and use it as a towel bar to tr- lift myself right. off well, the toilet of life. You yeah. know, I'm... I suspect this guy because this is what happens. You ever see the little kids? This is one of these little kids grew into him that think the tray, the drink tray, is a toy. Yes. And up and down and up. And you hear it like smacking over right. and over. And you turn around and you look at the parent. Right. And you go, how are you not, do, how would you not think that this doesn't affect me? Why aren't you saying something to your kid? Yeah. yeah they're over it. Yeah. I could always tell when my nephews, when my nephews were young, like five, six years old, I could always tell when my sister brought them over to my party house in Sherman Oaks to shoot some hoops and have a good time on a Saturday. What's this party house? I had a party house in Sherman Oaks. I didn't know that you did that well. Mm-hmm. That you had a party house and now you have a tour manager. <laughs> you are an elitist. <laughs> You're not what the listeners, I'm sorry, listeners. Yeah. Look not, at him. He knows it. You've been, know. You just outed yourself. Yeah. You guys listen to Adam <laughs> Carolla. I'm looking to the camera because he's a man of the people. Because he, he's faked you out with, I'm working on cars you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Let me mm-hmm. tell you something. He's he's an elitist. He has a driver now. Mm. When's the last time you drove? Have you renewed your <laughs> license in the last? Oh man, it's it had a, it's been like twenty five minutes. It's been a while. 
I'll, I'm going to say this because I look mm. at some of the venues you play. You're for sure the only person playing those re- those those venues with a tour manager. Mm-hmm. So you've done well. I mean, this yeah. is mm-hmm. uh, you're an inspiration to me. Thank you. The, the problem is, like I, if I feel like I've moved on, I, I I announce it. Whereas you, you've maintained this sort of man of the people. Well, I will. You know, speaking of that, I will be at Turlock at the Community Theater April seventh, and it'll be off to the Tower theater in fresno and then i will drive home that night so it's not that luxurious you're gonna be back at kimmel that's what i'm saying and uh yeah orny's gonna be at kimmel by the way coming up and i'm at kimmel's again in july when you're there in july well i hope you're doing the thursday i'm doing the friday saturday hopefully we can uh, share some stage time by the way orny's gonna be in houston at the riot comedy club march 31st through april 1st and then jimmy's I think we established 13th through the 16th of April. And then uh, Vasani Comedy Zone, and that'll be in Florida, right? Port, Port- Charlotte. Yeah. And that one's selling out. That'll be uh, April 27th through the uh, 29th. So I'm excited for Orny because Kanye likes Jews again. Oh. So I just want to say congratulations. Yeah, you're back. I'm here to say we're not accepting this. Oh, you're not no, accepting we're not this. Ready. Ready. No, we're not accepting half of Jewish people. No, I'm, I'm, I speak for all of us. We're not ready to accept this. It, it just happened too fast. Mm. Nobody has ever talked to Jonah Hill right. and said, <laughs> oh, now I don't hate Jews. You're right. like, I don't think I love Jonah, but I'm not too sure that's the Jew that would flip everybody. He saw a Jonah Hill movie. Kind of twenty-one did? jump. He, he saw Twenty-One Jump Street. Oh, uh, okay. And, he loved and now he's it back so much. with the Jews. Yeah, I'm not yeah. ready. I think it's a. I think it's a fake. Shouldn't he have seen Schindler's List? <laughs> Don't you think that would have been more persuasive? <laughs> he sees that, a, <laughs> according to him, a, a great work of fiction. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what Doug. Kanye oh. said, Kanye said, I'm ready to accept the Jews. In fact, I really enjoyed that uh, fictionalized movie, oh. Schindler's List. <laughs> It was funny that uh, 21 Jump Street flipped him. But you're right. All right, so apology not accepted. I'm not ready to... You know, I somebody actually offered uh, to bring him on my podcast, and I didn't know if I was the person that should should handle this discussion. Yeah. I don't know what I would say. No. I'm not even too sure why we still hate the Jews. If somebody could... I was watching this... Uh, I, maybe I've told this story before, but I was watching... On, in Oregon, they have these these groups. Of, I, I can tell you why the blacks hate the Jews, but keep going. Okay. Do you want to do that now, or no, should I finish, finish, finish with the I'll Oregon <laughs> then militia group? That, yeah, do the Oregon militia. That hated every every, every group. So they kept going on why they hate black people, why they hate Asian people. And I'm like, when are they going to get to the Jews? Because mm-hmm. I'd like to know, like we were discussing about this earlier, the Jews were uh, technically a minority, but there's not really an upside. There's no benefit. We're mm-hmm. not like... Put in colleges. There's no, you know what I mean. I'm right. not getting uh, on TV shows because I'm Jewish. We're not using mm-hmm. Jewish people to balance out any. Yeah. Any mm-hmm. Do you, Do you empathize with that mm-hmm. line of thought? Mm-hmm. Okay. So anyway, they they asked the militia. They go. So what is it you don't like about the Jews? Mm-hmm. And he said, I got to tell you something. These Jews have a lot of chutzpah. Wow. <laughs> can't do that i thought you can't use one can't of our words yes and he said it perfectly like it rolled off his tongue <laughs> yeah yeah because like he we, said it a million times yeah because i can like i can have you say a word like mm-hmm. a, a jewish word and i can tell that you didn't say it y- your whole life like you couldn't say yum kipper like i i would know yeah the tells are like you say young kipper mm-hmm. instead of yum kippur yeah, whatever it is, you can just tell. And I remember, like, the last episode, we had Dr. Drew on, who's now he's Jewish. So yeah. something happened with him. He must have been canceled or something. He's, all of a sudden he's always been be Jewish. Jewish. Has he? Yeah. yeah. But I've never heard him proclaim it. Is that something? And I, yeah, I, it's refreshing. It, <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think that's a sign of desperation in Drew's career? That he has to now align himself. Well, I don't think he comes out as Jewish very often. I think it was just because you were discussing that subject with yeah, him. I yeah. think that was it. No, I guilted him into it. Mm-hmm. What I love about Dr. Drew is he has a lot of chutzpah. Yeah. He really, <laughs> he really does. Now explain why African Americans are, uh, don't like the Jews. Everybody hates everyone it's always based in shame it's always Mm -hmm. shame based when it's not logical right you know what i mean it's like why do all the jew why you know you have israel yeah and then you have all the neighbors 
Palestine, for instance, and Israel thrives and Palestine doesn't, mm. right? So there's shame involved. So instead of going, what the fuck is wrong with our people and what are we doing wrong, they just launch Molotov cocktails at, at Israel. That's what people do when mm. they're ashamed. And the black community goes, we have slavery, and that's why we can't get along in this country. Right. But slavery was, you know, 170 years ago, and the Holocaust was 65 years ago mm. or 80 years ago or whatever. So you, A, got the Holocaust. You always get to pull the Holocaust out. So it's essentially there's nobody you hate more than when you're saying, like you're at a party and you go, oh, man, I was playing football in high school and my fucking my index finger was dislocated right. for a full day. And then some guy comes around and he explains, he rolls up in a wheelchair and says, I was paralyzed in a high school football so play how about in, in the NFL 87 or wh whatever it is. There's nothing. Yeah. They're one uppers. Yeah. So, so the Jews are one uppers. <laughs> they don't say it, <laughs> but everyone knows it. you got the Holocaust, yeah. which is newer than slavery. Oh. Number one, one upper. Number oh. two, you guys kick ass through family and education. Mm. And everyone knows the key to success in this country is even if you've been historically fucked, if you focus on family and education and not having kids out of wedlock right. and delayed gratification, you shall succeed in this country. Yeah. So thus, you people succeeding mm. create a lot of shame for them. Our success. Otherwise, the Asians would hate you too. Really? But they don't. They don't. Are we sure of this? Positive. Positive. Yeah. So the Asian and Jews are cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh okay. yeah. You're yeah. not even you're not even minorities. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Even interesting. though you're a minority by no. definition of the word, more than Hispanic or black, but Hispanic and blacks aren't doing as well, so they're called minorities. So who are the Jews threatened by? Do you hear the way I said Jews? Jews. Who who are we threatened by? Who uh, who makes us your feeling furious? Your nana. Our, our mom. Yeah, you're, you're, you're beaten down by your own cult. Oh, interesting. You're guilted by your own group. I know. This is, uh... Yeah, they're, they're, they're the ones that do all the discipline. They're a self disciplining group, the are, Jews. Do you hate the Jews? No, I've always loved the Jews. I figured the Jews out early on. But even though they're one upping you with the Holocaust and uh, well, I wasn't way, involved with slavery nepotism. directly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really? Directly. No, they. But if you could have been, oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I looked at the Jews as family, education, hard work, and thrive in this country. Yeah. So I, I figure them out. Yeah. They didn't pose a threat to me. Interesting. I, I love how you People who are work. successful do not pose a threat to me. Because you're successful. No, and... I, I was I was unsuccessful for when I was learning this lesson. Mm. I learned this lesson through many years of non success. So do you think the Jews rubbing your face in the dirt with your lack of success, inspired you and made you who you are today? I didn't, uh, I never, I felt like they were just going about their business being successful and not very interested in my lack of success. Did watching 21 Jump Street help yes. you accept the Jews? <laughs> yes, that's when I turned the corner. It's an important did, film. Did Connie have a conversation with Jonah Hill or he just? I don't think Jonah's commented yet. Oh. Um, yeah, on it, but yeah. yeah, he just watched the movie and, and put it on Instagram that, he was wrong. No, Orny, you have to understand there was only one Jew in my family, and that was my step grandfather, and he was the only one who had his shit together. Hmm. The rest were a flat out mess. Yeah. So I was like, all right, one Jew, a bunch of goyim. This guy seems to have his shit together. But I don't feel like the Jews are rubbing the Holocaust in people's faces. No. I don't feel like we play that card that much. We don't play victim. No, I don't think you maybe don't, maybe people do feel that. You don't have to. It's just it's out there. It's more recent history than slavery, and you guys are wildly successful. But here's the that's thing, enough it, info. And here's the here's the thing that's the the worst is 
I and, and politicians constantly explaining why black people should be angry and beating them over the head with it, which is very dangerous. I didn't even hear that last 10 seconds That's because I was still is. on my thought. So, but, um, uh, you know, I I disguise myself. I went undercover, even though I was Jewish. I never really discussed it. I changed my name mm-hmm. and I didn't um, you know, it wasn't that I was ashamed. It's just I was picked on in school. I just felt there was some anti-Semitism and then I felt like it went away. So in 2017, when I did my last special, that more than loud, I announced. I thought it was safe. Mm-hmm. I thought it was safe. In fact, a very prominent Jewish person told me, never let people know you're Jewish. I go, no, it's safe. And now it isn't safe. Mm. It's not safe anymore. It's not safe. No. And I really, anybody, look, I'm looking into the camera. Anybody who has a problem with the Jews, I encourage you to watch 21 Jump Street. Yes. Yeah. Jonah you. Hill will save the Jews. <laughs> He'll heal the nation and you save know why? the Jews. Because yeah. at not one point in that movie, and I've never seen it, he did not discuss the Holocaust. That's right. He didn't bring it up. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't need to. No. No. Was I understood. Th- I don't think he even played a Jew in Twenty One because Jews aren't cops, right? So what? He wasn't. Was the character Jewish in Twenty One Jump Street? I don't know. I mean, maybe Jonah. Could have been a giveaway. I don't know. I can't I, think of any any reference to him being. You've Jewish. seen the movie, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah I, I have. Not... I can't. I can't think of any reference to it. So mm. he did it subliminally. Ben the mm. nerd is nodding his head. No, right? No. Yeah. So, but look, we'll take all the healing we can get, right? Well, do you think it's anti-Semitic that he looks at Twenty One Jump Street and says, "I'm not anti-Semitic"? <laughs> to me, that he's looking at a <laughs> Jewish person not playing. A, J- a Jewish person and yes. just decides he couldn't even get into the character. Jonah Hill's acting is so shitty. All he saw was an acceptable Jew on the screen. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. If he had seen uh, Yentl or the jazz singer yeah. or the aforementioned Schindler's List, uh-huh. then uh, fine. Right. But 21 Jump Street, I don't think so. Or I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Can I challenge him right now? Yes. Please, challenge him. Please. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Kanye West. And first of all, I want to tr- retract what I said about Jonah Hill. I think he is a great actor. I didn't see 21 Jump Street, but everything he's done, I, I, I you know, and I, I beg, I beg you to hire me for something. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, but I do think he's a great actor. I, Kanye, if you're serious about this, I think what would make a great healing uh, step towards healing the process of what you said was if you put out a rap album version of uh, Fiddler on the Roof. Mm. I'd like to hear. And by the way, you could sing. Not if I if I was a rich man, you could sing. I am a rich man. Mm-hmm. Yup. Now that I'm a rich man, I'd make fun of the Jewish people <laughs> and not give a fuck about sneaker contracts. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're writing it for him. Now that well, we could collaborate, obviously. You should, yeah, you really could. Yeah. Do you know, and, and let this be inspiration to the young people out there, um, mm. besides Adam Carolla's career, because mm-hmm. you really, remarkable what you've done, mm. uh, in your, and, I, and I admire that. But also, Fiddler on the Roof, which took about 12 years to write. Mm-hmm. It, there's a documentary on it, which is amazing. Mm. But the most inspirational Kanye part- Kanye should watch that shit. Oh, he really, he really, he really should. Um, the most inspirational part was they- when they came out on Broadway, they did not want to open in New York for the critics without showing it one time. So they went to upstate New York to just run through it. Mm-hmm. And the, sure. the New York Times critic went up there and reviewed it. And mm. the first line, I believe it's the first line of his review was, no memorable songs in this play. <laughs> wow. So let that That's be a mic drop. some inspiration. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To me and Kanye? Yes. All right. I would love to write this with Kanye. We got to take a break. We got, uh, I got a a hypothetical, uh, not a hypothetical, a a, a question Mm. about form that we can get into. We got uh, March Madness, Madness to do, and we'll do all that with the Horny Adams right after this. Let me tell you about Morgan and Morgan. There were over 5 million car crashes in 2020. That's 600 an hour. Wow. So, if you've ever been injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, 100-plus offices nationwide, over 800 lawyers, more than $15 billion 
recovered for clients. Submitting a claim with Morgan & Morgan is so easy. It's more like using an app or ordering takeout than it is hiring a lawyer. A lawyer. Submit that claim without leaving the couch. Just uh, open your phone, and in eight clicks or less, you're done. If you're ever injured in an accident, check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. It's Morgan & Morgan, right, Dawson? For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash Adam or dial pound law pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R ThePeople.com slash Adam or pound law pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. And now Alcoa presents Definitely Not a Jew on the Adam Carolla Show. Dateline, Pinellas Park, Florida. A 57-year-old woman was booked on charges of failing to appear in court for theft at a Walmart. While being processed, police found a crack pipe in her vagina. The woman claimed the pipe was a sex toy. Definitely not a Jew. Wow. You know what I was just thinking mm. when I was listening to that? Because mm. everything comes out of Florida. It really is true. Yeah. Why don't we have 24-hour Florida news, like FNN, the Florida mm. News ah. Network, mm. yeah. streaming stories all the time like this? Because you don't get this in, in other states. I invented a game two decades ago called Germany or Florida, where we, have, <laughs> we hear crazy stories and then it's either Germany or Florida. Oh, I want to play that. But now Florida is even taken over Germany yeah. as the insane capital of the world. Right. Used to be if there's a story about necrophilia or something like that. Mm-hmm. You could, it was Germany or Florida. Wow. All day, every day. All right. Uh, question for you, Orny, and, mm. and everyone else here, because I have... I look for indicators in life. Okay. I don't need full run-on sentences. I just need little little tells. Right. You know what I mean? And like I was thinking to myself, like if you see a dude walking around like in his 30s, just in street clothes, yeah. and he's wearing a ball cap, and he has a certain kind of sunglasses, like 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 blades, like Oakley blades or something, and they're upside down mm-hmm. on his visor. Up to no good. Clip yeah, there. Don't trust that him. guy's law enforcement oh. or, or a Marine. The, 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 you can tell. I, I say guys all the time, thank you for your service. And they go, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> because wow. I know who the law enforcement, I know who retired law enforcement. There's just ways you dress, things you type. do. There's a type. There, yes. there is just a type. And they can't shake it. No, they don't know it. Oh. They're doing it. They don't know they're doing it. Oh. Like a gay guy walking. Yeah. They don't know it. Yeah, I, really? We know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the Jews. I know. Of yeah, course. Know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, I've always had a thing for a million years about how, how guys cross their legs. And Dr. Drew, uh-huh. Nuvo Juvo, by the way, yeah. yep. crosses his legs like a woman's. Mm. They He puts... The bottom of one knee on top of the top of the other knee. Wait like, a minute. I, How? I don't. I've been trying I to cross right mine by putting an yeah, ankle, ankle. It's a part on stretch. one thing. It's like I'm stretching out my yeah. groin and airing out my sack yeah. as much as humanly possible. But I noticed that guys who do that are more feminine. Wait a minute. What is he? Show me exactly what he. You does. cross your legs like a woman. At the ankle. Do you need me to get a dry erase board out? Yes, I do. So you're saying Dr. Drew. Not at the ankle. You... No, it's like, like Sharon Stone. Okay, so Dr. Drew crosses his legs like he's wearing a mini skirt. And yes. he's trying to prevent and, and he's us. he's on the Mike Douglas show. And he's trying to prevent us from looking up and seeing Something we on the Mike see. Douglas show. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mike yes. Douglas show. Is, is there an older reference? Is there anything in color? Jack Parr. Anything in color he you can, can reference? That. Douglas is. How dare you? He's a talent. He'll be. So have you discussed this with Doctor Drew? And oh, he's not crossing. You pulled up a picture where he wasn't crossing his legs. But even so that well. feels. He a little always little... has. He, uh, listen, I've, I've, I've done a million him, shows. Yeah. He crosses like a woman. It's a feminine tell. It's a tell that dudes mm. think in a feminine way. Okay. Right. And, okay. And, and it's I have a less theory already. It's way. way less comfortable. Yeah. I, there's no reason to cross your legs that way. But if you're a dude, mm-hmm. somebody 
tweeted me a picture. I saw this. And I was like, oh, we are fucked, but it's it's perfect. It's it's Justin Trudeau. Are you guys not ready with this picture? Because this is him I didn't give the, you enough, uh, enough run up to it. This is Biden and Trudeau, who are, are both chick think dudes. They think like mm. chicks. Trudeau thinks like five chicks. Biden Biden doesn't know how he thinks. He's just told how to think. So he's told to think like a chick. And what does that mean? I'm not questioning you at all, but what is a chick think chick for the think listeners like me that don't talking, know? Uh, it's a lot of circle talk about compassion and a seat mm. at the table. It's yeah. a lot of hand wringing. Oh, it's a lot of discussion about people needing to be treated with dignity. It's emotion based. It's emotion based decision making yeah okay. it, which is bad policy but it's it's emotion based okay. thinking so trudeau who's very chicky what and i don't know why we i don't why we took the picture down we're talking about it yeah i have so many it's good way to display your socks I have so many theories already <laughs> yeah. so uh trudeau who wears chick socks by the way and has chick dink they both do a full lap with that knee on top of the arm like full chick leg cross and then there's uh from china there's chi and there's uh putin from russia and they're having a summit and those fucking knees couldn't be further apart they're spread eagle that is like they have two sets of nut sacks in those <laughs> that's, fucking that's hard to hands. look at yeah no, yeah no. but this is why we're gonna get our fucking ass kicked and handed to us by these yeah. two because these dudes these two may be the dudious of all dude thinkers mm. going up against the chickiest of all chick think, and we are fucked. But I think you've selected just a moment in a, in a in an hour long session. I'm sure there's plenty of okay. moments where one of them is crossed. Uh, but Putin but then let me let me the explain. Two. No, no. And I also want to see this. I, 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 hold on. No, a oh, you, I gave you plenty of time. <laughs> this is a tell. <laughs> Nobody who crosses their legs like a dude. Ever slides into chick leg cross for oh, even a moment, oh. even enough to take a picture. It's painful to get that leg on top of right. the other okay, legs. Okay, but I would need to see video evolution of Biden and Trudeau because how did this form? They didn't just both get yeah. into it at the same time. So first. I believe one crossed first and the other is sort of like trying to make them feel comfortable or Nearing. relating to them. And I also believe, while well, I want to get this in, yes. Dr. Drew is doing that to be submissive to you, to make you feel yeah. more powerful. Oh. Mm -hmm. He's okay. presenting. Yes, he's presenting. <laughs> yes. He absolutely is. In the meeting. animal realm, yes, we call he that is. presenting. Yeah, he is. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. He, okay. I'll bet you Joe Biden crossed his legs a different way when he was in his 50s. Well, I'd like to see Joe Biden talking to Putin and see what the like. This, by the way... This is signaling just like wearing a mask outside with signaling. This mm. is you signaling that you are down with the cause. Right. Mm. That's that's what I believe. Well, the the ankle, if the if Joe or Trudeau did the ankle over the knee, it looked too casual. They couldn't do that. Just don't crush a leg. Here's the other thing yes. I would have to examine as a political scientist mm -hmm. and a uh, researcher of, mm -hmm. of all things. Putin is giving you chairs that you can't cross. Those are uncrossable chairs with the big arms on the side, whereas the big comfy ones up top with Biden and Trudeau, that you can slip into them and all of a sudden you can get into that posture. <laughs> well, I haven't thrown a tape on those chairs, but I would say you could cross your legs equally in either chair. But I hear what you're saying and yeah. I respect it. And I'm going to say, and I'll say this. Yeah. I can say this with 100% certainty, and mm. I will allow your listeners uh, to even validate this. Mm. There is not a single picture of me out there with my legs crossed like mm. that. There mm. isn't. Can you say that? Have you ever accidentally slipped into it? Possibly mm. when I was making fun of Drew and somebody took a picture. But okay. that would be the only kind. That wouldn't count. Yeah, there's Drew with his legs crossed yeah. hard. I, I will tell you this. I will make an argument for not crossing legs the way I cross legs. The way I cross legs by putting the ankle on top of the knee, mm -hmm. especially in a, in a an endeavor when you might be filmed or photographed, yeah. it, it, it leads to a lot of foot flopping. 
I do a lot of foot jingling. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, you get a little motion. When I when I do the cross, my foot will start bouncing a little bit. Yeah. You know, I, I I don't think no one who does the chick leg cross really does the foot bounce. I do a foot bounce. I could do a well, knee bounce when I cross my way. Yeah, because you can't breathe. You know what I mean? You've cut circulation That's off right. to you your can't, genitals. You can't feel your foot. Yeah, there's, you've gone numb. Doing as anyone in this building do the leg over the top cross. They're not going to admit it. I'm sure. Sometimes I, I, I sometimes I I'll fall into it. Sometimes it's more comfortable, especially oh, I, on an airplane where there's not much room. But oh, I've never even tried not, a leg cross. Oh, on I don't an think airplane. how can you, oh, you, do so that? you can't get your table but, down. Yeah. <laughs> what if there was an emergency and you had to That's get right. out of that Someone's fast? Got to cross your <laughs> yeah. drunken legs. Yeah. Do do women like this? Is this like a thing that women it's, might it's, like? It's a it's it's it says to the women, "I'm listening." Yeah, Drew's yeah. definitely listening in that picture when. When you sit like I sit, it says you bitches be talking. But when you when you cross <laughs> like that, you're like, mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. You're feeling yeah. their pain. Your therapist would Yeah, like that's that. that's how you cross. So maybe that's this is, listening. This is something that Drew learned in school. Maybe they teach this in whatever medical school. Yeah. It's also, you know, it's a one step away from just a full cock and ball tuck. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, I am going to see if I can remove my cock and balls from this conversation by smothering them with my thought. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know where it is right now. Where is it? Yeah. Right. I don't think so, physically I could do this for more than, you know, what? how long would you have to cut circulation off to your genitals before uh-oh. it would have to be removed? It's a picture orny with a full cross. You liar. No, no, that's not. <laughs> that's that's, that, you say that's doctor? son yeah. of a bitch. No, no, no. First of all, I don't own pants like that. You're Second. full doctor. <laughs> oh, my God. It's not doctor. We <laughs> have orny Adams. No, that, that with is. his legs <laughs> well crossed in the chick position. I just position. got a tweet. Kanye hates Jews again. Oh, I don't, no. Thank you. Oh. Good. Good. First of all, when would I be? What backdrop is that? This the, God bless America. It's an American backdrop. Comedy Club in San Diego. I okay, so are what, you saying this is cooked? This yeah, is I don't. Is this Photoshop. What, yeah, because what is? I'm on a TV show. With that, what is that? So, do you think someone <laughs> took the time to Photoshop this before this conversation? I, I think the embarrassing thing is it took all of two minutes to. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, a it's on video. Oh, oh, oh I was listening. Oh, but look at she's doing it too. This is Biden That's and Trudeau. You, you're right trying here. to get laid. Yeah, aren't okay, you? Yeah. right. So is that acceptable? Yes, yeah, it totally. is. And by totally. the way, it's a, I learned that move from watching you and Doctor Drew. That's He's right. trying to get laid too. <laughs> He's listening. Yeah. That is really funny. <laughs> wow, that took about a minute and ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Trudeau chick think, Biden chick think, and to be clear, Biden doesn't do chick think. Biden does does no think. He just thinks whatever chicks tell him to think. That thus he's in chick think. But that's and she and um, and, and Putin and uh, no way. Go, go back to mine for a second. Look at. Look at the news. It says Channel 8. Look, it's got a table card. Oh, that's a cup. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Going uh, blind. Yes. Yeah. That's you getting some last-minute ticket sales going before the show in San Diego. Yeah, I, and I do remember, yeah, they make me do media. I do remember uh, not having sensation in my genitals. It stopped a few years ago, mm-hmm. and I can probably trace it back to this yes. embarrassing <laughs> moment. Most definitely. All right. Wow. So guilty. Well, why don't we find charged. one of uh, these guys? You know? Since we're going to throw me under the bus, look, I, there's 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 hundreds of thousands of images of me and hundreds of thousands of hours of me doing panel on TV shows. I I think you'd be hard pressed to find. I it. just saw Adam try to do it in real time, and he was having a lot of. Trouble. I have a prodigious prodigious sack. <laughs> That's what, is what is, I yeah. want to say, and it's mm. uncomfortable. Do you want to maybe we'll try and sit like this now and see who can hold it the longest? Ooh. Hmm? <laughs> I, I just I, I don't feel I feel like it's cutting off circulation. I can't think straight. This is painful. But this is you definitely wanting to get laid because the news anchor is pretty hot. So that's admirable, you're single. Right? You're in San Diego for three days. Yeah. You want to hook up well, after the morning hit. Right. Yeah. So that's that's respectable. I went. I'm sort of saying, hey. I'm down with listening to your problems. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah you're saying- I don't keep points. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's easier to talk to somebody's legs are crossed like that. I think I mean, it's yeah. easier for me to open up. Look yeah. at look at my face. You think I've ever looked at a man like that? No. That smile and no. the eyes are you're- glowing. And- no. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let's watch. Give me 30 seconds this- of that interview. I bet oh, he's yeah. trying to hook up. I bet I get shot down, too. I bet. 
she's she seems attractive. Look, she's doing San Diego morning news. She can't be a pig, right? <laughs> it's, it's a right. big market. It's a big market. And Orny's there to pump up sales on the weekend show. And uh, he's smitten. Yeah. He's a Jewish man of passion. Yeah. And he's, <laughs> he's there. I'm, right. a, I'm a single man that uh, you know, right. needs. Mm-hmm. Well, this is not playing nobody, well Nobody could blame you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll see if we have, I don't know, have the top of it. I find that a lot of times these local anchors, they put you with a woman like this, and I do get the feeling they're hitting on me. Well, but then the minute they yell cut, they're gone. They're there to be nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's easy. Yeah. They might as well just put a pole in there. Oh, oh here we yeah, go. She's... Who cares? Well, Who cares? I like how you say our next comedian. Like, there's been oh, wait. <laughs> this morning. Like, this is it. Yeah, we got some and funny people oh, in the, the house. We're not the only back. one. Not qualified comedians. Yeah, how, what makes a qualified comedian? I anoint them. I, no, it's you. <laughs> my it's my the comedy or... holy water. And I go like uh-huh. this, and then mm-hmm. they become a comedian. Um, you have mm-hmm. so many, I mean, you've got hour-long specials on Netflix, Comedy Central, Showtime. You're a big deal, and then you roll up in here like you can't walk. You look like you're injured. I think you're wearing jeans from the 80s. <laughs> no, oh, these are not. Wow. Wow. Are, they, are they in right now? Do you have now? to emasculate me like this? I'm so sorry. Oh, <laughs> your leg is down smitten. To my you know, oh, it's a close up on the leg. Close, close up on the knees. <laughs> soda should now send me. Oh, Stone is that wash. Is that one of those that cost you $300 because it's like on Money trend right now? Money doesn't matter when it comes to jeans. <laughs> she's pretty, <laughs> Orna. Yeah. Yeah. She's look flirting, good, right? I, 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 she's paid to flirt. Nice. She feels very pre-me too, this entire interview. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I was it. watching some of your clips and yeah. they're hilarious, but you, your hair looks different from the clips that Why I saw. Why is that? Is I don't it? know. It looks a li- like, is this a new s- trend? What? Uh, <laughs> What? No. Why are you laughing? My hair's always been, you know, sort of crazy. Kind of crazy. Yeah. How long have you been a comedian? 27 years. <laughs> Longer than even a lot. Close up of it. Oh, I like you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I am older than that, but yeah. we're going to go with it. She, she likes you. by being nice. I know. Or a liar. You yeah. really just win by being yeah. a liar is the lesson here. Yeah. Uh, so why are you in town? You got a couple of shows at the comedy club, American Comedy Club? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we've got two tonight, two tomorrow night. We had one last night, uh-huh. and it's great. Now, you, when you did walk up here a second ago, you worked kind of limping and hunched over. You said you're, you're I'm moving. Old. Well, I'm old. You this are... is what happened. My eyelids have stopped working. Oh, now this is going to happen to you. All like right. Yeah. All right. The, but the point is that she's very attractive. Yeah. And her legs are crossed just like yours. And But she was putting me down in an effort to flirt. That was yeah, yeah. That's what kids Just do on the playground. Tugging on the ponytail yeah, on the exactly. playground. Yes, That's exactly. what happened. And so can you blame me for trying to close with a little Dr. Drew leg cross? Speaking of close, Absolutely not. They, <laughs> those legs were closed. Oh, and they, they zoomed in on it, too. I think I think it, it, it it's a way to, look, everything. Ingratiate yourself. You can't say anything out loud, right, when mm-hmm. you're trying to pick up a woman. Mm-hmm. It's all got to be body language, it's eye nuanced. contact. Mm. You know, women play with their hair a lot, sort yeah. of when they're flirting. They'll make a little excuse to touch you, like, oh, that's so funny. Mm. And they'll touch your arm or yeah. something like that. So that's what you're doing. Oh, you're, I you're, thought that's what she was doing. No, that, that's how she sits. But that's her job. Her job is to do that. Yeah. You cross legs saying, I'm here, I'm single, I'm lonely, okay. I'm in town. But in defense of me... Mm-hmm. Okay. Look at the the chair type I was in is closer to the Biden Trudeau chair type than the put, put me in the you Putin. Damn chair. It's the same it chair. It's the same <laughs> chair as Biden and Trudeau. Chair. You want to blame this on the upholsterer? Yes. It's not his fault. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, Go ahead. Get back to Trudeau. Put me in a Putin chair all day. Look at them. Okay, that's the same chair. It's the same chair. <laughs> It is nothing close to that chair. Yeah. All right. Well, it didn't take long, Orny. And, and we didn't know it was going to yield such gold nuggets as close-ups of your knees on top of each other. No, even the, even the cameraman was shaming me. Yeah, I know. The producers are like, zoom in on this chick. <laughs> mm, yeah. All right. Should we do a little uh, March Madness Madness? Yesterday, we kicked off the irate eight, so let's recap. Freeway weeds and trash upset California conference favorite Governor Gavin Newsom. So unlike the freeways, they're moving ahead. And in the classics conference, backup beepers got backed out of the tournament by click it or ticket. 
So Freeway Weeds and Click It or Ticket move ahead to the Furious Four. Let's find out who they'll face off against. First up, to crown the king of the pop culture conference, it's DJ Khaled versus Woke Car Commercials. DJ Khaled. Lawn fucking Jevity. I saw this jackass 11 years ago and I said, enjoy your fucking 15 minutes, fat man, because no one is going to buy into your bullshit for more than 16 months. A decade later, still fucking going strong, walking down the catwalk, modeling, producing, hobnobbing with every fucking celebrity, sitting courtside. I will give him his due and say, this is the American dream. We can take a talentless, morbidly obese foreigner from lands we probably are in a war with right now and make them multi-million dollars living seaside in Florida only in this country could we say that is a story a talented musical hack who is looked up revered and cherished by most Americans for no fucking good reason other than he can shape his facial hair so he goes from 375 to 262 just by simply carving a jawline into his fat untalented face Woke car commercials. Woke car commercials. Listen, it's not just car commercials. It's woke everything. It's woke Coke wanting the MLB All-Star game thrown out of Georgia because it's Jim Crow 2.0. It's American Airlines. It's every big company. It's the fucking Bitcoin guy, the Sam Freeze guy. He fucked you all out of your money by explaining how woke the company is. You don't think they know what they're fucking doing? They say they're woke. They get behind the environment. They get behind recycling. They get behind Black Lives Matters and then you idiots drop off sacks of money. I don't know what the fucking Mexican cartels are doing. The Mexican cartels should start explaining we're all down with fucking solar panels. We love Greta Thunberg. We, we love fucking whales and we want to clean the sea and you fucking retards would drop your money off with the cartels. I say it all the time. Black Lives Matter did not rip off Coke and they didn't rip off Nike and they didn't rip off American Airlines. You guys gave them a bunch of money like you give the mafia money not to fucking set your liquor store on fire. You didn't get ripped off just because you gave them a bunch of money and they bought a bunch of houses in Topanga Canyon. Job accomplished. You gave them money. You got off their fucking hit list and they didn't have to fucking shake you down. Oh, boy. Are we still doing this? You're going to need a nap. I know. So let's... So, Orny, let's pick who who advanced to well, the next round. Which first round of did all, you like better? Can we discuss what just happened? Yes. Nobody told me this was like a new segment where you lose your mind yeah. for two minutes yeah. and you get all red. I, I thought play the brackets. I thought you were gonna have an aneurysm. I thought we were gonna have get, get the defibrillator. Orny was worried about sweaty. you. Yeah. Wow, that God. was. Did you rehearse that or is that no, just, that's just that comes from within? It's, it's summoned. Wow. Like a demon. Wow. And has <laughs> that bell been here the whole time? Yes. The whole yes. show, I just the missed whole it. Show. You missed the bell. Wow, there's a lot of new stuff going on. Yeah. This new format. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this isn't called Personal Thoughts with Orny. <laughs> no, this, this is, is called March Madness Madness. Oh, right, that's so oh, the, the, thick, the thick Cal of the Cal bracket. Why, like when I come in and we all talk for a few minutes, shouldn't you guys say, hey, we have a new segment? I should have said that, yes. Where Adam loses oh, his you mind. You didn't give him the thing? No, I didn't know what was no, going to happen. Chris, I go, come on, I you got to produce. All right, now oh, now Chris is in trouble. Now oh, what? Oh boy! Sorry. All right, so DJ Khaled, I love I loved your rant about him. He is living the American dream. You did compliment him a little bit, so that's, that's going to hurt his chances for actually winning this thing. Woke car commercials. I did love you talking about the cartel and how they should get be a part of all of this wokeness. Now, I mean, they did issue an apology a couple weeks ago for when they uh, for that kidnapping that they did. Yeah, but they got to get behind the Green New Deal. Yeah, if they do that. They'll get the support of all California. A chicken in every pot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As much as I love seeing DJ Khaled succeed, I think this one goes to woke car commercials. Mm-hmm. Woke we- car commercials will advance. All right. All right, there you go. Next, to see who's the big dog in the big government conference. We're doing this again? It's the TSA <laughs> versus student loan forgiveness. The TSA. 
I was leaving LAX 6 a.m. Friday, going through the TSA at 5.10 in the morning and got the buzzer as I walked through the metal detector. Not because I had a knife or gun on me. I got the rando buzzer. It just randomly goes Mm. off and you got to randomly stand there. Uh, The next guy behind me gets the rando buzzer. We get two rando buzzers in a row, and now both of us are just in ra- some rando buzzer holding pen, yep. waiting for a morbidly obese guy who gets way too much an hour, who's the dumbest guy in your high school, to free his shit up from going through your yep. daughter's backpack, to come over and randomly look at both of us, felt up one breast, not both uh-huh. breasts, felt <laughs> left titty, dragged his hand on my left titty, grabbed a little areola, turned around and walked back in and out. First things first, this is TSA. We had a little something called 9-11. We had a bunch of fucking planes fly into a tower. Another one tried to hit the Pentagon. Why is the word random even involved with this charade, this theater of security? The word random, they shouldn't say random. That doesn't make me feel good. It makes me think that many other Al-Qaeda members may have passed through without me. And could we get this part, at least uniformity? When I was leaving out of Tampa on Sunday, I walked up to the booth, I pulled my license out, I started going through my backpack for my boarding pass, I go, we don't need it. I go, you fucking need it in the 18 flights I took to get here. Yeah, well, we don't. Fucking make it uniform and get rid of the word random. Inspired action in the irate eight, but will the TSA stand against student loan forgiveness? Fuck y'all. That's all on you. You took a fucking loan. And by the way, where does it end? Oh, we're going to pay off your student loan. Okay. Well, then you bought a car. Well, who's going to pay off the car loan? Oh, well, then I bought myself a vibrating butt plug. Well, who's going to pay for that? You pay for that. Get fucking used to it. And also... It has to be for a skill. I will underwrite people going to a two-year college to get an apprenticeship to be a journeyman, pipe fitter, electrician, plumber, roofer, tin knocker, sheet rocker, framing, foundation man, anything that has to do with building and what it takes to build. I will take that poor kid and I will pay his two-year apprenticeship. I will not pay you to go to UC Davis, kick a fucking hacky sack around, get high, and get a fucking Chicano studies degree on my peso. (laughs) Wow. Somebody is on fire. Yeah, Yeah. I love the TSA rant. Of course, I agree. It's too inconsistent. Bearing from airport to airport, and the random selection does nothing. I'd does like nothing. to be. I'd like to be in defense of the word "random." Mm. Okay, I think this is why, and this is going to upset you even more, Uh-oh. Adam. Mm-mm. Get ready. Get ready to hit the bell and lose your mind. <laughs> get ready to get the blood pressure up. We're using the word "random" because they really want to search a certain type of person, uh-huh. and when they do it. They go, no, this is random. Oh. So they're using random as an excuse to say, no, this could be anybody. They want to search the Jews. Yeah, they want. Oh, Oh, yeah. Jews are blowing up a lot of planes. That's right. (laughs) So that's what I think the random is. I like that conspiracy theory. But uh, also, but I thought TSA was going to take it until I heard your student loan forgiveness rant. Mm. That was masterful. And uh, ending it on the pesos. Mm. I, I think I think student loan forgiveness goes. Really? I see. I don't judge art. (laughs) <laughs> I don't. Like, these are his babies, and I think they're all equal. Oh, right, but, but I will. Got, one of them's got to be drowned in the tub. I will say this: as someone who took a student loan and paid it off, mm-hmm. I do believe if you take a loan, you should be responsible. I don't think it's teaching the yeah. right thing, but I do feel like there maybe we make them virtually interest-free, mm. and that could be a solution. Okay. All right. All right. I agree with so the word. So we got student loan. It's a student loan forgiveness. It's a Cinderella story, or could it be? Will student loan forgiveness go on to win it all? Find out as we tip off the Furious Four. Coming soon in March Madness Madness. I'll be in Houston next weekend for the final, this weekend for the final four. Oh, really? Yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, you go to book the hotel and there's no hotels. Oh, right. And you're like, why didn't the club tell me this six months ago? They've known for five years that the final four... So the uh, Red Roof Inn, normally sixty nine ninety nine a night, right. is now $850. <laughs> and then you have to travel with your liaison. Yes. And that's he's got to stay in he's the He's got to stay the, in the same the hotel. Penthouse. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. we got news to get to. Orny's uh, hanging out. By the way, the Riot Comedy Club. 
That'll be March 31st, or April 1st. That is for the final four. Well, uh, they cannot find any pictures of me with the knee over knee leg crosses I'll anywhere find on the it. internet. <laughs> I'll f- what is that? Oh, uh, oh, I got I got the biggest spread of any 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 celebrity on any TV. But doesn't that say to you, if you saw somebody else in those two pictures to the left, you'd say they're overcompensating? Oh, like maybe they're having a lot of feminine feminine mm. thoughts. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, not a lot of knee on knee leg crossing here. I don't think I physically can do it for more than ten seconds. Yeah, so. it cuts the circle. Yeah, but there's something wrong about what you're doing in that picture. No offense, but <laughs> what am I doing? First of all, the shoes are horrible. Yeah, at any time, even if they were ever in style. Yeah, I know. This guy who's wearing stonewashed jeans in 2021 and a half, but okay. Well, those are scotch and soda <laughs> jeans. Yeah. And, oh, scotch uh, and soda. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you don't worry about it. It's the height of fashion. Uh, if you seriously, you question DJ Khalid, mm. okay, and look what you did to his career. So keep questioning. You're right. His shoes. Yeah. He puts them on a pillow courtside, and he. Uh, oh, that's remember? right. Yeah. Puts them on a pillow. I couldn't name a single thing he's done. No offense to him. Yeah, but, but I don't know. I'm not in touch. He's gonna. Uh, he's gonna produce a new Fiddler on the Roof rap <laughs> album. We're coming up with. That'd be so good. Mm-hmm. We could do. What other songs? There's, there's uh, uh, Sunrise, Sunset. If I was a rich man. What else is there? Sunrise. No, we're missing a big sun. one. Is this the little, little girl? Little girl, girl I carried. Is, is this, this the little girl at play? Da 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 da. da, da. Matchmaker. Uh, matchmaker. 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 Make me. A match. match, yeah. Kanye find can do me this. a find, yes. catch, catch me, me a catch. catch. No good songs in this play. Oh man, it's Dickens. great. You're yeah, the Does, did Doctor Drew reach out to sort of to Kanye? <laughs> yeah, to mend things. To, I don't know. As a bridge, we are usually just talk about me, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's different when I'm on the podcast. Mm-hmm. I take you away from you. Yes. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yes. I make you question. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll do news right after this. O'Reilly Auto Parts, always been a part of my life. Well, maybe not when I was five or six, but as an adult, first time I got a car, that's the first time I walked into the O'Reilly out in North Hollywood, California back in the day, and now they're a sponsor. What a life. It's O Rewards Bonus Points Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Shop in store or online. Get points and rewards sent straight to your phone or your inbox. You can get two, three, or even four times the bonus points on select purchases to get you to your next reward even faster. Receive a $5 reward for every 150 O Rewards points. And if you're uh, already an O Rewards member and not receiving the rewards, Just add your email or mobile phone number and get a $10 reward just for updating your existing account. And you sign up, and it's quick, and it's easy. Just go to O'ReillyAuto.com, O'ReillyAuto.com, or do it in a store. That's an O'Reilly store. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, Eastman, we've talked about seeing dogs on airplanes all over the place. I got a new one for you. At the gym, I've seen it a few times now, people bringing their dog to the gym. That's right. I'm not sure, but I'm betting that the dog's name is Spot. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Well, if you can take your dog on a commercial flight, then there really is no place you can't bring your dog. Whoa. Well, I saw one at the gym, too. The gym, a movie theater, deli, like what's, it's all below a commercial flight, mm. if you think about it. Yeah, how do you feel about this? Fucking hate it. Yeah. Are you a dog person? Yeah. I mean. I, I love dog people that are against other dog people. Yeah. I respect that. Yeah, well, well you're, not, you're not dealing with dog people, you're dealing with narcissists. Right. Who feel like they have to travel with their dog. Right. Which everyone likes their dog and wishes they were with them but yeah. then we have decency yeah. and uh we think about the golden rule mm. and other normal things like that and then we, we leave our dogs at home here's the other thing when i was growing up because we're not our narcissists. Narcissist. Yeah. yeah when i was growing up maybe one out of ten families had one dog 
Uh-huh. And it was like uh, it was like a German, sh- like a, what do you call it? Golden Retriever. Looking mm-hmm. do- looked like a dog. Mm, yeah. Didn't look like an accessory. And <laughs> no. then the dog wasn't in the house. It wasn't the center of their lives. Right. The dog, they'd open the door in the morning, and the dog would run off. Right. And then about 5 p.m., somebody would go, <laughs> has anybody seen Fido? Right. And he, you know, and they'd go, Fido! Fido! In the neighborhood, you hear, <laughs> And right. the dog would come galloping home. It mm-hmm. might have a crow in its mouth. Right, a gift. right, yeah. right. Went on its own. Advice. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it was gone for the day. It wasn't yeah. carried in a in a knapsack to no. the farmer's market. No, I believe you me. You, you're speaking to the choir. And then I, I, I don't love everybody's dog. I'm sorry. No. Some dogs I like, but I don't want to be a part of your training. Right. Okay, like I'll go to your house and I'll open the door and the dog starts jumping. And they go, down, Skipper, Skipper, right. down. Skipper, what are we working on with the trainer? <laughs> down, sk- Well, why don't you finish working with the trainer? Yeah. And then let's skip A lot up. of, listen, I used to go into people's houses all the time and install things. Mm. Closets, cabinets, spent a lot of time in people's houses, yeah. you know. And the thing that people suffer from is they want you to make friends with their dog. Uh, but what they don't realize is I'm going to be in your house for three hours. I'm going to stall a closet. I'm going to get a check, and I'll never see you or your piece of right, shit dog yeah. again. Yeah. So why do we need to bond? I'm leaving. I'm not a roommate. We're not lovers. I'm mm. leaving. And the dog be barking with the screen door, and they'll, they'll, they'll be telling me what the dog is thinking. Oh, he's safe. He thinks you're here to attack. And like, I'm not interested in reading this dog's mind. Put him in a fucking office and shut the door. Right. Then I'll come in. I'll yeah. stall the closet. And right. then when I'm done, you can open the door again and let the dog bark again. You don't right. need a bond with this no. dog. No. Oh, then then they always say, that he's friendly. He's friendly. Yeah, yeah really? I well, see his teeth. Yeah. And he's salivating. Right. This right. actually happened at Dawson. Yeah, where was that? advice on sunday when i got bit by my friend's dog what happened uh well i showed up at my friend's house in austin he was going to give me a ride to the airport and uh we hadn't seen each other in a few years we were having a conversation he's got a big great pyrenees over the over the fence but it's a low fence Mm -hmm. and uh the dog's barking and barking and barking and barking and we can't have a conversation i go give me a minute dude thinking I'm a, I'm a dog whisperer mm-hmm. and I say I'm gonna let me go make friends with your dog so that we can continue this conversation Uh-oh. and I walk over to uh, the fence and I say nice things to the dog and I put my hand over the fence in front of the dog's face and you know sometimes people say they have connections with dogs like I could read that dog's mind at that mm-hmm. moment at that moment I knew exactly what that dog was thinking that dog was thinking you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> and he bit my hand. I believe might have cracked a bone in wow. the top of my hand. You can see wow. how swollen it is. Mm, yeah. Did, but so calmly, so calmly, just looked at me and then crushed my hand, held it for about a second and a half, and then let go. Wow. And then continued to bark at me. Wow. So I am not a dog whisperer. Did they put the dog down? No, we just, no, of course not. Now, if not. you were more famous like me and My Adam, friend's mom's ass. Yeah, that dog would be <laughs> yeah. down. Did no. he drive you to the yeah. airport? I know, take yeah. an Uber. Yeah. I no, mean, we, we hung out for a bit. I hydrogen peroxided it, and it's fine. But the, my friend's mom was laughing and said, I told you that dog would bite people. And he goes, that's why I got the dog, mom. <laughs> so it's wow. all fine. But yeah, I got, uh, you, I, you know I, I, I should have not needed to become friends with a dog. You're right. I think at that a certain years. age, you should be able to get yourself to the airport. Mm-hmm. And I think this is sort of the Lord's way of saying, you know, get an Uber. Mm-hmm. Oh, this. This is it. Dawson. This is a message. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I had spent five days in San Antonio. I went to Austin to go see my friend because that's where the flight was from. And he offered. Yeah. Mm. So, but maybe the Lord has guy. spoken yeah, through the maybe. mouth of the dog. Maybe. All right. Let's do some news, uh, Max Pata. All right. So a lot of people online have said about this recent CNN article that came out. Uh, th- it was uh, written by John Blake, and Dawson has it, so he'll just let's just have him read it, and you guys can have your own opinion on. on mm-hmm. Are you okay to read Dawson with your hand and everything? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. What's digital blackface, and why is it wrong when white people use it? Perhaps you posted that meme of supermodel Tyra, Brank- Tyra Banks exploding in anger on America's next top model. 
I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Or maybe you've simply posted popular gifts, such as the one of NBA great Michael Jordan crying. Or of drag queen, queen RuPaul declaring, girl, if you're black and you've shared such images online, you get a pass. But if you're white, you may have inadvertently perpetuated one of the, one of the most insidious forms of contemporary racism you may be wearing digital blackface. Well, I, to me, I always hear these stories and think, good news, we're out of racism. Mm. We're out of actual oh, racism. So, okay. We're, we're on to we're on to nothing. Yeah. But this is a good thing. Because when there was actual racism, no one ever talked about the who gives a shit racism. They talked about real racism. Don't you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't which, know. Which means we're done. They moved on. This is it? Well, are you saying this there's now Kanye? more racial hoaxes than than actual yeah. racial, uh, you know, there's there's more fake hoax nooses hung in dorm rooms than there are actual nooses hung by real racists in college dorm rooms now. So we're we've jumped the shark with racism. This is a good sign. Yeah. We have blowhards like John Blake explaining, by the way. Whenever they have to explain to you what the racism is, that means we've jumped the shark. Mm. So when you go, they lynched this poor black man just for talking to this blonde girl. Let me explain why that's wrong. You don't need to explain it. We heard it. Or when they say there's a, you know, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. couldn't stay at the same hotel Dean Martin stayed at. And when he did, mm. he'd have to enter through the kitchen, even though he was on the billboard of the marquee of the club he's playing. You don't have to sit down and explain yeah, I can why that's wrong. That. But when you're talking about digital racism, blackface, or uh, sorry, digital, digital blackface, blackface, or you're talking about COVID being racist, or you're talking about environmental racism, you go, what? And then they go, let me explain. Uh, Pete Buttigieg has to explain to us why this bridge in this road is racist. So, and then it takes a while. Do you have a problem with white people taking black memes and putting them out there? Do you no. think that this is... You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Do you? Do you, do you have a problem? I don't know. I, I don't I, have a problem. Okay. I think at times there have been some memes that, to me, feel is the word minstrel like sort of. Well, they, he actually used the word minstrel. Yeah. Was, so to me, I've seen some that I go, this feels a little kicking down and a little, and they did make me feel uncomfortable. But I think it's extreme to call. I mean, blackface is is a serious accusation. Yes, I don't. Yeah. Think, but I think you can say, hey, maybe just be a little bit more aware. Mm -hmm. what you're putting out there or how you, you know. Or not. I, who gives a fuck? You don't care about anything. No, nobody really gives a fuck. Do you, this doesn't offend anyone. How it do you, offends this guy, but he's not offended. See, he doesn't care either. That's the whole thing. That's what people don't understand. The people who claim to care don't care. It's a business for them. Okay. Yeah, they don't care about Joe Biden doesn't care about black people. He cares about getting black people to vote for him. If if he cared about black people, then his policies would help black people, but they hurt black people. None of these people care. They're fucking hustlers. They're trying to get jobs or keep jobs or get paid. They do not care. They just don't. That's it. If they did, they do. BLM doesn't care. This asshole doesn't care. Joe Biden doesn't care. They don't care. And if if you don't believe me, how come Joe Biden never said anything about racism 12 years ago or six years ago? I mean, the guy's been in politics for 65 years. I've never heard a fucking word out of the guy's mouth. Now it's a nonstop fucking conveyor belt of race hustling. None of these people care. John Blake doesn't care. They want us to talk about it. And we're doing it. We're talking about it. That's right. Yeah. But it's good. It's good. This means no real racism if this is what we're talking about. That's hmm. what I'm saying. So you welcome it. You welcome, I welcome these kind it. of articles. I welcome it. Yes, I love it. I like it. I like. I like that COVID was racist. I like that uh, wanting to reopen schools was racist. I like that there's environmental racism now. I love that bridges and roads are, are racist as well. I love it. Right. I love it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, there's a handyman in Nevada. So what happened was his his, uh, his dad died and his mom could no longer live in his family home in California, mm -mm. right? So um, this woman, so they put up the house for rent in California, and this woman who identified herself as a prison guard reaches out, 
looking to rent the house, but uh, couldn't offer any money or credit. Mm. Uh, so the, the handyman's like, ah, I'm going to have to turn you down. Sorry, but just uh, you wouldn't obviously make a good tenant. Well, en- the woman ends up going to move in anyways, brings in a truck of furniture, moves into the house. Neighbors are reporting lights on at night, cars in the driveway. So the handyman calls the local police and asks if you can please remove her from my property. Oh, that's California. But it's California. No. Yeah. Well, I don't understand it. She broke into the home and started living there? Yeah. Yeah. Is that squatting? It's squatting. Yep. Well, they have rights. Squatters mm-hmm. have Squatters rights. Have a lot here. of rights in California. Yeah. So the local police said, there's nothing we could do to help. You're going to have to go through the courts, which is going to take a ton of time. Mm-hmm. And this woman is a uh, corrections officer? That's what she said she was. I mean, who knows? But how did she's, she get into Did she anonymous. break into the house or was she given like a digital key? Uh, that's that's unclear, but it looks she was, she was able to occupy the house somehow. Um, mm. because this guy, the handyman, lives in Nevada. So she, she goes and moves into the house. Um, so what, what the handyman does is he goes, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what she did back to her. So he waits till she leaves, goes back to the house, and moves in himself. Mm. Right? He writes up a <clears throat> lease agreement with his mom, making him the legal tenant of the property. Uh, he loaded up his car, packed a gun just in case, and went drove 12 hours to this house. Mm. Uh, and then when the uh, squatter and her granddaughter returned, he confronts them saying, you guys got to be out with all of your stuff ASAP. The squatter goes, oh, and apologizes. It was very nice. And they leave. Wow. Yeah. A little frontier justice, but it went off without a hitch. Yeah. So there's there's the, uh, there's yeah. the handyman. I don't, I, handyman is to carpenter what chiropractor is to surgeon. So yeah, what a, is a handyman? It's like they sort of fix things, right? Well, they do a lot of everything, but not. I think carpenters look the, down their noses at handyman. Mm. A handyman more all around though, like yeah, they'll, be plumbing, yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll do, do a toaster oven yeah. one day yeah, and a shower not, the next. They're not stepping on all carpentry. They're a jack of all trades, master yeah, of none. Right. Yeah, notice Jesus was not a handyman. He was a carpenter. Was he a carpenter? He was a carpenter, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Judas, mm, handyman. handyman. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's all clear Judas now. was a handyman. Was a handyman. Did yeah. not know that. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, le- crossed his legs much like I did on local news eight, <laughs> and <laughs> then tried to kiss Jesus. Mm-hmm. Jesus, I don't know what happened in Jesus's day. Mm-hmm. Carpentry was a tougher skill. Because now you have pneumatic framing guns and OS yep. sheets of OSB. You know, back then, mortise and tenon, you know, you'd have to use dowels and stuff. You'd have for to make joinery. your own dowels. Yeah, I mean, you, everything was handsaw. There yep. was no cordless anything. Yep. Couldn't just sink a bunch of deck screws into into something. Like, yep. it, was, right. it was work. Right. You had to have a skill back yep. then. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. That makes sense, doesn't it? Imagine. I'm gonna. I'm going to. Hold on. I'm going to close my eyes. Go ahead. In the memorabilia department. Mm, the cross know, would go for a lot. All right. The cross would go for a lot. But you think about like Michael Jordan's sneakers from his rookie season, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Imagine a crib that Jesus built himself or a rocking chair. Or an entertainment unit. Well, you would they ever I mean? clear on what he was building? I don't think he was a crib maker. I think he was... Entertainment unit? Yeah, I think he was. <laughs> credenza. I think credenza. he was known for the credenza. <laughs> yeah, they're vague about his carpentry. <laughs> yeah. Just a carpenter. And yeah. nobody's questioning it. Nobody's, hey, can you produce anything? Yeah, this finish, is Anything written? We're doing finish, base and case, crown molding, you're hanging doors, you're doing yeah. rough, you're doing rough framing. Is it like one offs or was he like the IKEA of his time? And he was like oh. mass produced. He might have been like Warhol and had all the apostles working in this factory and he sort of designed and then he was like bossing oh, he's people project around. Manager. Yeah, he's project oh, manager. He yeah. might I'm not saying. It's just it's not clear. Right. It's never dis- I've never heard it discussed. And maybe I'm I'm wrong. I've yet to see any of his actual work. But I'd like to know, you know, was he up on the cross saying this is bad oh, craftsmanship, yeah, you know? Shoddy joinery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't mean to be blasphemous. These are just these are legitimate questions. And I know people get upset. You know, mm. I was on stage the other night at the improv and I said uh I said uh, uh don't get married. Mm-hmm. And somebody in the back yelled why? 
we sh- why shouldn't I get married? Mm. Or you're wrong. They like yelled, you're wrong. <laughs> right. And I said, let me stop the show for a second <laughs> and explain comedy right. to you. Mm-hmm. We say outlandish things mm-hmm. that we may or may not believe in, mm-hmm. but we're just trying to get a reaction. Mm-hmm. And then you try and cancel us. Right. That's that is right. the protocol. I mean, we I say a lot of things on stage that I don't necessarily believe in mm. or I'm aligned with, but I'm just trying to get a reaction. But yeah. now, you know, I was talking about home births the other day. Mm-hmm. People were outraged. How can a a male and a white male talk about home birth? Mm. You don't tell a woman what to do with her body. Wow. Yeah, I, I listen. You yeah, you don't get me started. That. All right. Well, next I thought story. you were the exact right person. To get started. I, I, I'm blue in the face from discussing this over and over and over again. You but say you, whatever you want. Can you? Okay, so it's okay to comment about, like, I'm trying to protect the baby from being I, born in a tub. I, it, it comes with the territory. Let's not throw the baby out with the comedy bathwater. Okay. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is it's just, you're there to comment and share your opinion. That but, is all. That's as far as it goes with me. Right. But you should be able to comment on everything. Absolutely. Like, if the mind goes there, and for the first time I thought, geez, you know, he's, the, the irony that he's a carpenter and he's up on a cross. And if it was me, I would be up there going, I don't like this. This isn't even. Right. Yeah. Nobody used a level. Yeah. His joints are terrible. That's right. That's right. And that's where comedy comes from. It may not be plum or level. Do you know the difference? No. Explain to me. Plum would be the vertical part of the cross oh. being off. Level would be the part where your hands were nailed. And how do you spell plum? Is it with a B or is it? I think it is with a B. I think it is with a B. Yeah, and, there you go. I mean, boss, how would you feel if Jesus is up there and the guy nailing the thing to him using finishing nails? Oh, I'd be like, you're not using a 16-penny ring shank with a common head? (laughs) It's not cool. (laughs) This is the work of a handyman. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) These are cuphead finished nails with no pull-out. I'll be able to pull right through this. And number two, hello, we're outside. They're not galvanized? Uh, They're not bonderized? We're not using stainless steel here? Yeah. It's going to rust away. Yeah. 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 All right, let's do another one. All right, so, uh, Orn, you were talking about how someone said chutzpah. Chutzpah. Yeah, you boy, you say it like a goy. I'm, I know. I'm sorry. Well, I should I should yeah. say it like that. Well, anyway, uh, there's a Mississippi morning news anchor who who quoted Snoop Dogg and uh, and has since been let go. She's just no longer part of the team. Everyone really said what happened. Or, mm. But here, let's just play the clip and then we can talk about it. Come up with. I think that'd be pretty cool. Before <laughs> we know it, she'd have a Snoop Dogg tattoo on her shoulder. A shizzle, my nizzle. <laughs> I'm telling you, Julie. What do you think about that? Huh. Huh, she says. <laughs> a little uncomfortable well, there. This. A fu- the guy on the right is uh, looking mm. concerned. So well, he's is- looking concerned because he's 20 years younger than both those people. Right, and he he's kind of understands. His, his antenna's up. She yeah. lost her job? So yeah. Far, yeah, her name's Barbie Bassett. She was an anchor at uh, WLBT in Mississippi. And yeah, they're talking about Snoop Dogg's wine line. WLBGT? What? L- WLBT. Mm. And uh, NBC affiliate, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. is close. And so, yeah, she's no longer part of the news team or on the website. They won't. St- they they refuse to comment on it. But I mean, I think if honest. you're talking about Snoop Dogg, you're allowed to do a Snoop Dogg quote. Yeah. What but, what what does that mean? What, oh, well, so for, it means for sure my N word for shizzle my. Oh, yeah. I got to be honest with you. I would not have known that. And I could see myself just saying that. Oh, I've said it. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't not say know, it not, if I knew. Not knowing it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. To, that so. But N word is a, is short for N word. So that's what we do. Like, he made up a word. I, essentially, this yeah. is insane. I don't it's insane. think you should be canceled if. You don't know. Did she know? There's no way she knows. She's no way. I, yeah. Yeah. There's absolutely no way. And it's just, it became his quote, like to where there is no meaning except for that's just what Snoop says. We got to no- stop being so unforgiving. Yeah. If somebody makes one mistake, she's on the air every single day. Now, if she meant to do, meant to be racist, that's something else. But I don't know the whole story, but I hear these people losing their livelihoods over one thing that they said. And I, I think it's, it's crazy. Nobody takes intention in a call. Give me the bell. No. I got yeah. something to say. Oh, Fire yeah, it up. It. Stop it now. Stop the madness. <laughs> no, I, listen, I, there is no context. Yeah, I, I, I see a look in your face. Like Go. when I, I started to launch into it, and you got to sort of look like, is this what I sound like? This. 
craziness, this this insanity. Can you say stop the Lynn sanity? Remember Jeremy Lynn? Can you say that? Or do I get canceled? For some people? I don't forget Jeremy. People Lynn. got canceled for some of the shit they said when he was playing, too. Of course. All right. Let's take a, a quick break. We'll come back and do a little more news right after this. The Jordan Harbinger Show, a different kind of sponsor for this episode, The Jordan Harbinger Show. Well, if you're a fan of fascinating podcasts and interesting people, you should definitely check this one out. There's an episode for everyone, no matter what you're into. Jordan talks with Scott Adams about persuasion in a world where facts don't matter anymore. Man, is he right? Or you go inside the dark world of wildlife trafficking. You'll always find something useful to apply to your own life, like routine changes to boost productivity or slight mindset tweaks to change how you see the world. Jordan's a good guy. We've had him on uh, many times. I know the man well, and he's worth a listen. We enjoy the show, and we know you will too. So you can search The Jordan Harbinger Show. That is H A R B as in boy, I N as in Nancy, G E R, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. In celebration of Jim Carolla's upcoming 92nd birthday, here's a list of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Number 40. Done a martial art of any kind. Just one of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. All right, Orny Adams hanging out. Max Pat, I got some more news. I got the bell handy in case Orny yeah. gets going on something. <laughs> Orny, you, were you, are you a Pats fan? Yes. Yeah. When we were winning, yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Aaron Hernandez. His brother. His brother is in the news right now for uh, allegedly, I mean, it's pretty obvious that he did do it, but uh, allegedly throwing a brick at ESPN's headquarters with a mm-hmm. note attached to it. So according to police documents, uh, an Uber car pulls up to ESPN's gates, and they're trying to get in. Of course, they get turned away. So this guy gets out, throws a brick with a note in it at the headquarters, and then leaves. Old school. Yeah, old. that is an old yeah. school move. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the note says, to all media outlets, it's about time you all realize the effect media has on all family members. Since you're a worldwide leader, maybe you could lead how, many, how media and messages are delivered brick by brick. Clean it up. Yours truly, Dennis J. Hernandez. Mm. Yeah, a lot oh, of typos it. in that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, he signed it. I oh. like that he put the middle initial. Yes. It sounds regal, like Esquire. Yeah, yeah. Did he put his Venmo or any other information no, on there? No, yeah, no QR code on there. But he did, uh, He, I guess he goes by Jonathan ever since his, his brother died. He took. A, he went by his middle name, Jonathan Dennis J. Hernandez. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he just shoved that in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So has this led to any reform or any, uh, well, this so is such a great... Immediately. He was, he yeah. was, he was arrested for misdemeanor breach of peace, uh, but was released on a promise to appear in court next month. And then the cops, uh, they also advise he's no longer allowed at ESPN's campus, to which he responded, yeah, I understand. Uh, <laughs> what, is he an athlete? Does he do something? Well, he actually, he wrote a book about his brother he, uh, called The Truth About Air and My Journey to Understand My Brother following uh, you know, his death. And uh, he's, 30, he's 36 years old. I don't know if he was an athlete, but... Yeah, so his brother's just having an episode right now. How do they determine who has to pay bail and who they can just promise to show back up? Like, mm. I'd like to know, like, if I was in front of a judge, would I have to pay bail or do they trust me enough? I think you got to pay something. No, this guy got a, he threw a brick and then he got a promissory to show up. It's no, a handshake was, agreement? No, what was it? Read what the, the uh, quote. With a release on a promise to appear in court next month. I thought that was bail. No, uh, the bail is bail. He was out on bail. This guy just promised. I, I, promise not I don't know because we're, we're changing verbiage every ten seconds for everything, so this could be part of it. Yeah, but, but I, I don't know. Yes, you would think if it was bail, there'd be a number behind that story, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Next story. What do we got? All right. So, oh, you'll, you'll like this, Adam. So, exercise mm. is more effective than medicines to manage mental health, according to a new study. Oh. What? <laughs> Because I've been fucking saying this, on, I've been saying this on fucking Loveline for 28 years, mm-hmm. 20 fucking eight years. I, because we talk to kids 
all the time. They're like, oh, I'm depressed, and I want to get on this. I'm going to get on right. Zoloft. I'm going to get on serotonin reuptake inhibitors or something like that. And I would go, listen to some classical music and take a hike. Oh. Just do it. Just put classical music in your earbuds mm. and t- hit the trail. Yep. Do it for two weeks, and then call back and say it. And then everyone's like, you know, people have chemical imbalances. It can't all be cured with blah, blah, blah. At some point... Somebody invented this sort of brain chemistry imbalance thing. Mm. They also did a fucked up thing in this country, which is, and it's the same thing we were talking to uh, Jillian Michaels about with this crazy bitch who Biden appointed to run the health ministry or whatever. It's like, just because there are less than 3% of Americans who don't effectively react to diet and exercise, you've decided to... to stop preaching diet and exercise right. when 97 and a half percent of the populace would react very positively to this thing. You keep, we have this new fucking society where people are not everybody, not there's some people yeah, that are more to outliers. Yeah. Okay. Those are outliers. Those are outliers. Most people who are depressed, if they exercise vigorously and listen to some classical music, it would change their demeanor and their mood and the chemicals in their brain almost immediately. But you have to explain why there's 3% of people who have a brain chemistry issue and it can mm. only be addressed with pharmaceuticals. Great. There's 3% who won't be affected by diet and exercise. And there's 3% who need to be on serotonin reuptake inhibiting drugs. That's 3%. Then there's the 97% of us who would greatly benefit from exercise and or diet and exercise and, and classical music. So they... fuck right off, everybody. Right. Jesus Christ. Can I can I tell you the, the millions of hours of conversations where I've said to like, oh, listen, people need, not everybody, not everybody, not everybody. <laughs> yes, not everybody. Now shut the fuck up. And these people that do need to take the drugs, if they exercise, if they combined it, with exercise, yes, yeah. they would see even more benefits. Yes. Yeah, so yes. this is the British Journal of Sports Medicine. Of course. And this will file this under your fucking grandma knew everything. I just told you to get outside, get some sunshine, break a sweat. What was you I know, missed what the, the whole article was about? What was the first thing you said? Oh, so well, pay they, attention. I'm <laughs> sorry. Exercise, well, it's basically exercise more effective than medicine. Oh, to manage mental health. Adam's depression. been saying this on Love Line for know. years. Mm-hmm. Of course, I agree. There's also a new study in, from uh, Amsterdam mm-hmm. that says, uh, yeah, it's same thing. They People with depression or anxiety, they did a test. They, some of them received antidepressants. Some just joined a running group. Right. And, yeah, it was equivalent, basically. To I think the whole world is depressed. I think we're in mass depression times, and I don't see why not. The news is horrible. I don't. I, I don't, know. That's all we need. It's Florida horrible. News. I don't get the fuck is wrong with everyone. Everybody. Do you leave the house? Yes, I, I like you. I leave the. House, I'm putting weight on because I hate people so much. It's, it just uh, makes me eat. Everything is the most basic. It's it's all diet and exercise. Everything, and I don't mean diet and exercise literally. I mean that's your answer. It's the most basic answer for everything all the time. But everybody is attacking everybody. <clears throat> everybody is out there throwing tantrums. I every, know. Every corporation's ripping us off. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't trust anybody. Yeah. And then on top of that, we're in show business. Yeah. Which is every single day just bombarded with buffoonery. It's, seriously. <laughs> I like your alliteration, son. Yeah. These people <laughs> that I have to deal with every single day. Well, look, there's a problem. Look, the, the, bless, the blessing and the curse. You see things clearly, and that's why you're a comedian. Hmm. But you see things clearly, and that's why you're punished by everybody and their fucking horrible takes and ideas and their process, yeah. essentially. Talk, I talk to more fucking dumb adults who don't think straight, who, by the way, always tell me, you don't know what's going on. How do you know? What's going on? Like, I, I have to explain what happened uh-huh. in every situation to, to dumb adults who think I'm wrong. That's I went to works. I went to uh, bingo night last night. Somebody brought me to family bingo night. <clears throat> I, really? I texted a buddy. I said, "Why don't we go <clears throat> to happy hour?" And he said, "Well, I'm going with the family to this bingo night. Do you want to come?" Mm. I, I was tortured. 
Yeah. I was yeah. the only one who saw everything wrong with this entire right. situation. That's right. And I'm just sitting there going, why <laughs> did I leave the house? Why did I leave the house? And it's just, I got home and I was like really bummed. First of all, the game was fixed. There's no question. <laughs> oh, yeah. One yeah. table won almost <clears throat> every game. Cheers. And there's money involved. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. They're on the Probably. board. You know. And uh, yeah. the whole thing, here's the other thing. We were in this group. There must have been... 200 people in this hall, not a single person said hi to anybody. Mm. There was no, like, we we're just like individuals in our own pods. Mm. But everybody was content. Everyone seemed happy, except, uh -uh. For, except for guess who? I would have no, been happier at happy hour. It's got the word happy right yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah. And it's longer than an hour. Yeah. All right, what's the next right. story? So remember how I was talking about Gwyneth Paltrow going mm. to a trial for that mm -hmm. ski accident? Yes. It's a yes. guy suing yes. her for $3.1 yes. million. Dollars. Yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> this, is, this video has been going viral. So this is the guy's attorney. Her name's Kristen Van Orman, and she's questioning Gwyneth about the incident. But, uh, yeah, she, she has a weird method of questioning, I think. And so let's just watch some of it. It's pretty Shh, great. It looks good. You were wearing goggles, a helmet. Yes. Okay, kind of looked like everybody else on the slope. That's always my intention. Okay. Probably had a better ski outfit, though, I bet. I still have the same one. <laughs> May I ask how tall you are? What's she doing? Stand I'm up. just under 5'10. Okay. I am so jealous. I think I'm shrinking, though. <laughs> you and me both. I have to wear four inch heels just to make it to 5'5. Five five, well, so. They're very nice. Well, thank you. Objection, you're not blowing the witness. Accident oh, reconstruction. She's, there's plenty of that. Me? Yeah. No. Neither am I. I was yelling at him. Pretty loud. Pretty I forceful. Was, I was pretty upset. Right? You're yeah. small but mighty. Actually, you're not that small. So everyone's dreaming and I'm across, assuming, right? And you're under yeah. oath here <laughs> that you're a good tipper. <laughs> yes. Okay. Wow. Fantastic. I wouldn't expect anything less. Can you imagine if that was your attorney prosecuting? Wow. First of all, we've got to do away with handheld microphones yeah, in weird. the courthouse. Yeah, lava up. Yeah, but then she's walking around like she's doing a TED Talk, get, <laughs> yeah. getting yeah. in people's faces. That was like a Sam Kinison routine. Yeah, you're right. Why? Why? Stay at the, at the dais. That was assault. Yeah. yeah. Stay over there and ask your questions. Right. And I would, you couldn't put me on the stand. They go, I hear you're good. I mean, it's none of your business. Mm. What does that have to do with anything? What mm. I'm wearing? Mm. I would have said, if you were a man asking me that, mm. you'd be canceled. <laughs> uh, Mr. Adams, you've claimed in, uh, when you're deposed mm -hmm. that you've never crossed your legs by putting one knee on top of the other knee. That's correct. That was to my memory. And you're Let me read uh, a transcript of your deposition. <clears throat> I have never cross my legs that way. I do not approve of it. And you could scour the internet for the next thousand years and you would never find an image of me crossing my knees in a feminine style like Joe Biden and Trudeau. Is that a correct statement? Uh, I'm going to take the fifth. No, we just, <laughs> I, I'm reading back to you your deposition. Is that an accurate statement? Uh, I'm not too sure I'd have to okay, go back well, and see uh, that we deposition. Just go ahead and look up at the video screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we went ahead and found uh, San Diego's News 8 yeah. when you were playing Hyenas in uh, Kern County yeah. in uh, uh, 2021. Let's just watch some of the footage of you with the uh, attractive news anchor. And tell me if you can describe what position your knees are in during this interview. I, I would ask that you would allow me and my counsel to view this in private with all the deep fakes. I can't... Uh be sure this is absolutely uh me. we have vetted it we've submitted it and uh i believe the judge had already um said it was admissible so could we just go ahead and watch the videotape mr Adams? Sure. this is uh you being interviewed by uh, an attractive lady with your knees in fact crossed <laughs> in the direction i'm wearing those jeans the next time i'm on please <laughs> i am absolutely <laughs> Yeah. Wearing those. By the way, do we have a moment to play the greatest deposition in the history of depositions? Yes. Yeah, of course. Well, we okay. Time for that. Epstein find his deposition. Jeez. It lasted one question. They asked him if he had an oval shaped penis, and he just got up and left. They knew he wasn't <laughs> going to answer any questions. Wow. So they just said, "Is it true you have an oval shaped penis?" And he just got up and left. It's oval. The, yeah, he had an odd shaped penis. A lot of these guys, Weinstein, like had his nutsack 
yeah. you know, hot glued to his thigh and stuff. Mm. Like uh, Michael Jackson evidently had something going on down there. Yeah. If you have a weird penis, do not engage in this right. activity. Watch. This is. Have you ever seen this? No. Oh, seen this it. is. Just... Would you raise your right hand, please? Yes. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guys? Yes, I do. Could you please give us your name? Jeffrey Epstein. Is it true, sir, that um, you have what's been described as an egg-shaped... <laughs> oh, that's oh, oh, yeah. oh, they cut it off early. Egg an egg-shaped <laughs> Wait a minute. Find it, because he just gets up and storms off. Like, also, an, like an egg-shaped penis man would do. Could he be... I, I have a non-egg-shaped yeah. egg penis. He couldn't cross his well, legs. Yours started off looking like a normal penis, and then you kept folding your legs that way, and Mine it changed a, the shape it, of oh. it. Is it true you have a jumbo <laughs> egg-shaped penis? If he said jumbo, I'd hang in for the rest of the depot. Oh, he just gets up and leaves. It's Also, great. shouldn't someone have told him, you're going to be in front of a charcoal backdrop, do not wear a charcoal... Yeah, like, I saw shirt in front. Of, he he picked a shirt, floating head. It was exactly the same color as the well, backdrop. This brings up two objections that I have. Mm-hmm. One, every deposition is the worst video work you've ever seen. It's almost uh, as yeah. bad as a police interrogation. Yeah. Yes, and it yeah. drives me absolutely. The audio is horrible. Here's yes. the other thing that I can't stand. That's going on nowadays. Every documentary has the director or somebody off camera asking questions. Unmiked. And, unmiked, but they know this is what they're going to do the whole documentary. Right. And so mic the person. Yeah. It's a stylistic decision, yes. and I'm sick of it. I agree. Mic them up. If you're going to be bell. talking. Fire it up! <laughs> yes! That's right. All right. We'll and find me find my penis egg video. shape. Here we go. Now we got it. Here we go. Is it, is it true, sir, that um, <laughs> you have what's been described as an egg-shaped... Penis. Form, vague and definite, and I'm going to give you the, the first warning, Mr. Kuban, that these types of questions are not only argumentative, but directed in a manner to embarrass uh, Mr. Epstein. If you continue with this type of question, I'll adjourn the deposition immediately. Sir, according to the police department's probable cause affidavit, uh, one witness described <laughs> your penis as oval-shaped, and claim when erect, it was thick towards the bottom, <laughs> but was thin and small towards the head portion, and called it what, egg-shaped. What the high school to do that was shaped that way? But as Mr. As Mr. Critton has stated, that this is a... Uh, and he takes the, the mic, mic off and he leaves. Yeah. That's whenever vague, you, whenever you take your own mic off, that means that's a bad ending to an interview. Yes. Yeah, it's like if, a reality when, show. When you remove your own mic, that yeah. that's a statement. That means this interview did not go as planned. Absolutely, because if it goes well, you know when you shoot things and it goes it, well, it, you want the audio guy to come over and tell you how great you did. It mm. could be a deposition of a pedophile, or it could be reunion for Vanderpump Rules. Right. But anytime someone takes it off themselves, I don't care if they yell "cut." Even then, if you stand up and start taking it off yourself, that's a bad sign. Yeah, yeah. You sit there and wait for the sound guy. And the, and the sound guy comes over and tells you how great you were. Right. You were better than anybody else that's ever been on the show. That's right. You know what I mean? And it, it kind of feels good when they pull the cord, if the pack is by your ankle, and they pull the cord up, mm-hmm. and it sideswipes you know, part of your genitals. It's the reward. When you uh, were in your stonewashed jeans doing News 8 in San Diego, yeah. did the mic guy run the lav up the shirt? Or do you do that thing where you kind of reach down your shirt and he hands it to you midway? Because the there is a straight yeah. buy and gay version to mic a oh, guy up. Really? Straight version. Uh-huh. They hand you the cord and you fish it up yeah. your shirt, dragging along your bare chest. Okay. Yeah. Uh, buy version. He puts it halfway up. You reach down and meet him in the middle, and then gaze. He goes all the way. And what if the sound person is a woman? <clears throat> Oh, I never thought about that. Yeah, I'm just trying to enlighten you. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I'd have to work that one out. Yeah. Yeah, I got to get back to you. I, I've never, I always have guys as what, sound guys. What I love about morning media, like what you just saw, <clears throat> is they wake the comic up at five in the morning. Yes. Okay, you just flew all night. You may have had a show, may not. Get up, 
do media. Right. The the other the the, the uh, anchor fully made up, lit perfectly. Uh, right. And then you look like good death. night's sleep. No yeah. makeup. They don't put any yeah. makeup on you at and all. And then the the promoter picks you up. He'll yep. be like I'll be by the hotel at five ten, and then he picks you up. Yeah. And then you smell his car. Yeah. He's got a dog. He likes a cigar once in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not smoking it now, but he smoked it before in the car. Yeah. He's got his own picadillos, you know. Yeah. And he's driving you around, and he's explaining to you who the stations are and what they are. And you just want him to shut up and stop and get coffee. Yes. They never know a coffee place that's open. They do this every week. Right, right. But they don't know a coffee place that's open. Yeah, it's I did. Uh, last time I did this, I did the weather. Where was that? That was Arizona. Oh, that was in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Scottsdale. I, I went and did that, but I took over the weather. You're very department. concerned about whether my cup is on a coaster or not. Yeah. Is this is this something that can't get damp or are we worried about that? It feels like something I'm not a carpenter, I'm a handyman. No. Well, Jesus that could would be know. sanded yeah. down. It, it could be real carpenter. I mean, but there's we have a, carpenters. There's a and lot we have, of uh, coasters. There's a lot against the grain mm-hmm. sort of damage. Yeah. Well, that's from people who are careless. Yeah. I mm-hmm. care. Mm-hmm. I respect your wood. Thank you. All right, one more, Max Pata. All right, uh, Italy. Mm-hmm. So they invited a Florida school over on a field Florida. trip uh, in Florence after a principal was forced to resign over uh, a David stat, the David statue, right, statue of David. So the, uh, this Florida charter school was doing a lesson, and they showed a picture of the statue of David um, and to a sixth grade class. And mm-hmm. parents complained because they said it was too pornographic, too sexual, to where the principal felt she had to resign. I saw this story on HuffPo, uh-huh. and it feels a little, something's off okay. about this story because Statue of David's been around for a kajillion years, sixth graders, these ain't third graders. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's art. And I think this is more what HuffPo thinks Florida is. But I, I if this person, wait you a know, minute, Florida. Okay, got it. There's a lot of like that person resigned after the blah blah blah. But what there's always there's got to be more. That person had to have wanted to it resign. Is pretty vague. These... Or had a, a like an ongoing beef, and this was like the last straw or something. Yeah. It's not yeah. like they showed a picture of the statue of David to 12 and 13 year olds and the principal got fired. Mm. That that cannot be the story. Right. There's got to be more. Well, didn't you say I'm they saying. were in Florence? Well, no, no. So uh Florence, the mayor of Florence actually reached oh. out to the school saying, "Hey, come have a field trip over here and be and educated." S- and see the cuz we don't find anything wrong with with our art here. So, but yeah, Adam, you're right. So what they said was the board pressured this principal to resign because they have a policy requiring parents to be notified in advance about, quote, controversial topics being taught. But there's not really... And the principal is, like, kind of cool about it. It's like, oh, the mayor reached out? That'd be great. I would love to go. I'd like to call this mayor, and I'd like to say, I'd like to take every one of these kids' phones and show you what they're looking at (laughs) all day, the minute they leave school. Trust me. They're not shocked by a clay penis. Yes. Egg shaped or not. <laughs> That's right. No, this is bullshit. No, now I'm fired up. No, now I've had enough. What I'm saying is, is I, this principal was either going to retire in two years or had a full package and would get paid out the rest of their contract or won the lottery the week before or something. Right. This a is not too easily. If, if you want to, if you want to stay and fight for your job, this is easily winnable. And this would definitely be wrongful termination if you're showing an art history class to people with pubes and you show a piece of history and a piece of art that is ensconced in the world's right. uh, vocabulary. No, you're not going to get right. fired from this. So Something's the, up. Yeah, well, so the mayor tweeted an invitation for the principal to visit so he can personally honor her. And this is what uh, the principal responded. And this it's a the, her? Yeah. yeah this no. is how the principal responded. Quote, I am totally... Like, wow, I've been to Florence before and I've seen the David up close and in person, but I would love to go and be a guest of the mayor. So it's flattered. Well, they called it the David like they did with the Batman. Mm, right? Yeah. The old David. The David. I, you can, you, uh, look, I, I'll forget the guy's name, but Orny doesn't matter. There was a standout linebacker for the San Francisco 49ers. It's been eight years, maybe 10 years. And this guy had a great rookie season. 
maybe a great second season, and then retired. And I said, uh, this guy was an all-star, an all-pro. You know, he's been in the league for two years. I uh, said, I'm retiring. I don't want to injure my brain. And I said, uh, who the fuck turns their back on $22 million contracts when they're having standout years for a premier team in the NFL? Right. And then I paused and I said, his dad's got to be rich. His dad does something, mm-hmm. you know, and we're, because that's the only reason you turn your back on a multi-million dollar right. yeah. contract. And lo, lo and behold, his dad runs a hedge fund in San Francisco yeah. or whatever, and he's going to work for him. What I'm saying, everyone, is there's an explanation to everything. Yeah. When female teacher just goes, all right, well, let's just agree to disagree, and I'll walk away from my job because I showed a picture of a famous statue right. to people Not that even were- teacher, principal. Principal, something, there's something more to it yeah. than that. Well, how do we find out? Because now I'm, is this something, are we doing like a cliffhanger, like on tomorrow? Yeah, well, so, you're right. Yeah. So there's this, lot, this will be discussed? There are yes. a lot of articles written about it, and I will say that one article at the very end went, by the way, Florence is not paying for this trip at all. It was just an invitation. So they're making a, they may be making a mountain out of this molehill here. It's also a HuffPo article, so they've kind of got their angle. I'm just, I'm, I'm dubious. I like that. I'm, I'm, I'm be. dubious. But like there's, a, there's an article, uh, there's a story. Chris has it somewhere. I don't know what the story is, but I, I'll guarantee you. I was talking to someone about this morning. There's an NFL football player. Oh, I have it. Right. And and he says he got pulled out of a security line, and somebody was patting him down, and he asked that person to stop, and three TSA guys, like, jumped on him. Swarmed. Swarmed on This was at right? Chargers, Sebastian, Well, this video Joseph should Day. exist. Is there video? Well, it has to be if it's, if it's in the airport. The airport. I mean, All right. So most. good. So I said to the person that was telling me that he didn't ask them to please stop patting them down. He pushed them. He said he pushed them away. Right. Or something. That's why the other TSAs. Yes. That's right. They don't they react. Swarm yeah. Be- not and, because and you know firsthand because you were randomly selected, selected to have your left breast. That's right. Examined. So the- and I've always. I've done this podcast several times, and I thank you for having me on, but I've always been bothered by your left, to me, right breast. It's egg-shaped. I've suspected it's up to no good. I feel like America's safety Mm. lingers Mm. on whether your left chest... I'd say it hinges on it. Hinges, thank you. (laughs) No, so I'm telling the person, and they're saying to me, Oh, he said he just asked them to stop. I said, that's what he said. Right. But he must have shoved them or pushed their arm away or right. put their hand on the guy's hand and pulled it away or whatever, because that's why TSA would swarm. If you said, excuse me, I'm religious or something, could right. I get a female to do this or something? They wouldn't <laughs> They wouldn't swarm. What religion yeah. is that where you can ask? For Muslim. A, so a male can ask for a female? Reach around. Really? Uh, read the Quran. Do they have like menus when you go through TSA now? Like, hey, mm. do you want the female reach around? Is there a whole? Well, let's not make fun of people, Orny. What? Who am I making fun of? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what is this? Leftover notes from another guest? Probably. Larry Merchant, Harold Letterman. Ma- look, we a we have to clean up around here, Max Pata, because people like Orny see things and I, react uh, to them. Yeah, I realize that now. Yeah. Okay, uh, but in general, wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, I'm is sorry. there any video of this? Uh, I mean, it must exist, but um, I haven't seen it. Somebody any. pushed somebody away. That's yeah, it where says, the swarm came. An agent came touched in. him inappropriately. Then he alleged that he, at, when he asked the worker to stop, he was then swarmed by three more TSA members. Right, but when someone touches you inappropriately and you're a bonus baby in the NFL, you tend to push them off. Right, and That's I've, what I'm anytime I've been, they use the back of their hands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which mm-hmm. now, surprisingly, when I'm with women, I ask. You crave it now. I get back of the hand touch. Yeah. <laughs> I go, let's play TSA pat down. I wonder if these guys do it so often that they go home and feel the wife's boob up with Abs- the back of absolutely. the hand. Absolutely. That's how you know. Oh, yeah. Both ways, like if yeah. you're dating a TSA agent. Uh-huh. In fact, that happened to me one time unsolicited. I said, uh, I said, you know, she put her two and worked me between the Trying not to be graphic, but yeah. yeah. She really, everything was back of the palm. Mm, and that's when you knew. Yeah, I knew she, I go, can I, I, can I guess? And I don't, you know, I'm not a fortune teller, but I suspect you're TSA. Mm. And I was right. Mm. Yeah, I was right. Mm. It's interesting. It's yeah, just like you can tell is. who's an FBI agent. Mm. I have the same skill, but with 
Who's female TSA? And I can tell the grounds people, the guys who work out on the tarmac, because I remember showing up at this chick's uh, apartment and she had a flashlight that was red and she just waved. Yeah. She stood in the hall <laughs> oh, and yeah. she waved me in. And when I got far enough, she cut it. Yeah. You know, she said she yeah. cut it. And then she backed me up yeah. a little bit with the red flashlight mm-hmm, thing and yeah. then stopped it there. And then she went to use the bathroom and oh. I just stood there. Yeah. You yeah. were able to do the math after that. You know what's interesting is like that we would think the back of the hand is any less invasive yeah. than the front of the hand. Mm. Like, And it happens so fast that you don't have time to sort of really... And the, all, the ultimate insult is to backhand somebody. Yeah. So this is a long, oh. slow, yeah. drawn-out backhanding. Yeah, they put a glove on, and then mm. they backhand you. All right, let's bring it home there, Max Zapata. Orny Adams, I'll give you a plug. The Wright Comedy Club, coming up uh, March 31st through April 1st. That's in Houston, so if you're there for the Final Four or or March Madness, uh, check that out. Where do we go? Do we go to... uh, Go to ornyadams.com, and I have a lot of Southern California dates, Hermosa Beach and uh, some other place. Please. Uh, Me, Turlock, Fresno, Vegas, Oklahoma City. And if you haven't seen Adam, you got to see him. you got to see him. No, it's such a great show. It really oh, is. Well, bless yeah, you. Absolutely. Bless you, uh, and if anytime you want to talk comedy. Yeah. Like, seriously. Next to parents. jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, till next time, I'm Carl for uh, Orny Adams and Chris McFadden saying mahalo. <laughs>